Roddy presiding. Please be seated. All right. Do we have any preliminary matters before we have the jury? Of course we do. That's fine. Come on.
All right, are we ready for the jury? seated. All right, next question. Good morning, Ms. Hurd. Good morning. Your relationship with Mr. Depp began in October of 2011, right? That's correct. And you previously testified multiple times under oath that the first year of your relationship with Mr. Depp was the best of times, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. You testified that as far as you could tell, Mr. Depp was sober that first year. That is correct. That's what I used to believe. And that the first year was, quote, magic. Yes, I always uh, estimated it was about a year. But now you've told this jury that Mr. Depp was being violent with you throughout 2012, haven't you, Ms. Hurd? No, he took a break in the middle of 2012 when he was sober. You told them that he was hitting you in 2012, though. Is that right? He was hitting me in 2012. He just took a break in the middle. He was smashing things around you, right? He did. And you told them that Mr. Depp was in and out of sobriety in 2012. That is correct. You told this jury that in two, quote, in 2012, I was in the beginning stages of this, just learning these patterns. I was learning that drinking kind of correlated with the violence, end quote. Is that right? That is correct. So it was during these cycles of violence in 2012 that you gave Mr. Depp a knife as a gift. I gave him a knife, um, I think for a birthday present early in our relationship. I believe it was around 2012, but I'm not certain. We've seen a picture of that knife, but I think we should bring out the real thing. Master Deputy Halusa, Master Deputy Sheriff Halusa, may I please have you show the knife to Ms. Hurd? Yes, that's it. That's the knife you gave to the man who was hitting you, right, Ms. Hurd? I wasn't worried he was gonna stab me with it when I gave it to him, that's for certain. But you gave it to him while he was abusing you, allegedly. I gave it to him that year. Master Deputy Sheriff Lusa, will you please show the knife to the jury? Thank you. This is the knife you gave to the man who would get drunk and violent with you, right? This is the same knife that I gave him as a present in 2012, yes. Now, Ms. Hurd, I'm going to need to talk to you about what happened in Australia in March of 2015. You've testified that at some point during the incident you described, you witnessed Mr. Depp bashing a phone against a wall, right? That is correct. You testified that the phone was breaking into pieces. I was watching it disappear. That Mr. Depp smashed it, I think your word was smithereens. Yes, that is correct. And according to your testimony, this was a wall-mounted phone in the bar area. That is correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1820. Miss, I believe this has already been admitted into evidence, so if we could have it published. Thank you. 
You saw this photo during your direct examination, right? That is correct. And you testified that the wall-mounted phone that you saw Mr. Depp smash is on the wall on the left. That's correct. So if you were looking at this picture, the wall, the wall-mounted phone would have been behind you on the left-hand side of your shoulder. But it's not depicted depicted in this photo, correct? Whoever took this photo was standing right in front of where that um, mounted phone was. That's convenient. Um, the pieces of the phone Mr. Depp smashed aren't in this picture either, right? You don't see it because it's whoever took this photo standing in front of that. Whoever took this photo, it's Mr. Ben King, correct? That's what I believe. Yeah, Mr. King testified under oath in this trial, right? That is correct. And he testified that there was no wall-mounted phone smashed to smithereens that he had to replace, correct? I didn't hear him testify to that, no. He did. The counsel elicited it. I disagree with that representation. You also saw this picture. Actually, can we please bring up Defendant's Exhibit 1821, which is also admitted into evidence? You also saw this picture during your direct examination, correct? That is correct. And so this is the bar area to the right of the wall-mounted phone you just described. If you were facing in that direction, if you're facing this direction, it would be behind you. This phone on the counter isn't the phone that got smashed to smithereens, is it? No, they brought that out um, during my testimony in the UK as well, and I said this in the UK trial as well, that that is not the phone. Obviously, because that one's not smashed and it's not wall-mounted. Yeah, so there are two phones in the bar area. There, there was a wall-mounted phone. I don't know if it was decorative or what, but it was white, like it looked antique, large and antique. And and what the large and antique one that's not depicted in any photograph, including ones you took, is the one that Mr. Depp damaged, correct? That is correct. I only took pictures of the mirrors. So there's no picture of that damaged phone? I didn't take a picture of it, no. So back to the phone smashing. You watched Mr. Depp smash the phone, right? That's correct, I watched it. And you testified that you were, quote, watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back, end quote. That's correct. And according to you, this is when Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger, right? It is my best guess. I didn't notice his finger come off, obviously. I was um, watching him smash the phone and watching the pieces break while he was doing it. Well, it's not your best guess, Ms. Heard. That is my best guess, yes. Okay. Let's go back to my questions. You submitted a declaration under the penalty of perjury in this case. Do you remember that? That is correct. Okay, let's look at that declaration. Yes, ma'am. could direct your attention, Ms. Heard, to the page uh, 14 of the declaration. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. And your signature appears right under the statement, quote, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Virginia, that the foregoing is true and correct. That is correct. And this is dated April 10th, 2019. Correct. Now let's look at paragraph 16, which is on page five. Specifically line 10. Quote, you write, testify under oath, while he was smashing the phone, Johnny severely injured his finger, cutting off the top of it, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So you testified in this courtroom that after Mr. Depp smashed the phone, he held you down on the countertop by the neck. Do you remember that? I'm not quite sure of the exact sequence of things, but yes, both of those things happened. Okay. Well, we'll get to the sequence. And this is when Mr. Depp supposedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? On the countertop, he assaulted me. So Mr. Depp was able to get you on the counter, right? He held me down by my neck. And hold you down by your neck. 
That is correct. And he grabbed a bottle, according to you, while holding you down by the neck, correct? I'm sorry, can you clarify what you're asking me? While Mr. Depp is holding you by the neck against the countertop, he grabs a bottle. That's your testimony. No, those two things didn't happen at the exact same time, no. While he, so he's holding the bottle, is that your testimony? He While holding, holding you down neck. by the neck? Sorry, what was your question? Your testimony is, Ms. Heard, that either he has the bottle before or after he's holding you by the neck on the counter. Is that your testimony? He held me by the neck on the counter. Where's the bottle that he assaulted At what point? While holding you down by your neck. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, it was in his hand. Okay. Was it in his hand before or after he holds you down by your neck? I was being held down while he assaulted me with the bottle. When he puts you on the counter, does he have the bottle in his hand, yes or no? As I have always said, I don't remember exactly what happened first, or I don't remember the sequence. I just remember being aware that I was being assaulted by a bottle while I was on the countertop. So he penetrates you with this bottle. But you don't know how he got the bottle, right? That is correct. And he did that right after he lost the tip of his right middle finger. Again, I don't remember the exact sequence of those events. We'll get to the sequence. And while he was on eight to 10 MDMA peel, pills, right? Yes. <laughs> talk about the sequence. This is the sequence of events you testified to in this courtroom. That he smashed the phone to smithereens and then assaulted you, lost the tip of his finger, and then assaulted you with a bottle. Yes, that's the sequence of events that you testified to in this to be, courtroom. To be clear, you're putting it in order when you say words like, then I have never claimed that I can remember the exact sequence of these things. This was a, a multi-day assault that took place over Three horrible days. Ms. Heard, the worst thing ever Ms. Heard, to me. I we're don't not talking. Ms. Heard, that's not my question. My question isn't about the three-day assault allegedly that occurred. I'm just talking about the sexual assault that you now allege occurred. Yes, okay? correct. Let's talk about the sequence. <laughs> so you testified. Actually, yeah. transcript yes Ms. Heard, do you have a copy of day 16 in front of you uh, day 16 yes, yes. of court my deposition transcript. yes mm -hmm. no of the court transcript from this trial. Oh, yes. I, I didn't realize that. This, yeah. Okay. I do. Let's look at the transcript. So you testified on page, I'm getting there, 4506. reason that we need to go through this, Ms. Hurd, is because we understand that these are very serious allegations that you're making, right? It was horrible. What happened to me, yes. Okay, so let's go through them. Page 4506, line 2 through 3. I sit here now, apologize, you testified on page 4506. This all started when Mr. Depp took 8 or 10 pills of MDMA, right? That is correct. Then, directing your attention to page 4518, line 19. You talk about Mr. Depp smashing a wall-mounted phone, correct? That is correct. Okay. Then on page 4519, at line three, 
You testified that while Mr. Depp is smashing the phone, he is screaming, quote, I fucking hate you, end quote, right? Yes, he, he was screaming that, among other things. And further down on page 4519, same page, lines 12 through 19, you talk about how you watched Mr. Depp smash the phone to smithereens, right? That is correct. Okay. Then, continuing on on the same page, 4519, line 20, you say something really important. Quote, at some point, he's on top of me. No phone, but screaming the same thing, end quote, right? I just remember the sound, yes. But you remember, and you testified to the jury, that he didn't have the phone in his hand anymore. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, right. he had the bottle in his hand. When he was punching the wall with the phone, he had the phone in his hand. When he was punching the wall next to my head, he had me by the throat. He did a lot of things that night. So you're acknowledging by this sequence, not my words, your words, Ms. Heard, that you testified to this jury that Mr. Depp smashed the phone to smithereens before he assaulted you. That's have, the way, that's the sequencing in which you testified, correct? I have never testified to a sequence. Okay. Keep talking about that sequence. Then on page 4521, starting at line three, you testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? Okay. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to page 4521, starting at line three. You testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? That is correct. And then feeling pressure on your pubic bone like Mr. Depp was punching you, yes? That's what I thought. And then further down on page 4521 and on to 4522, you testified that you were concerned Mr. Depp was using a broken bottle on you, yes? That was my fear. Okay. That's what I remember feeling. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 1816. Just already been admitted. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You saw this picture during your direct examination, right? I did. And you testified that this is a picture of the bottles that were next to Mr. Depp on a desk when you found him drinking in the morning, right? That's correct. And this was the morning after Mr. Depp had allegedly sexually assaulted you, right? It was the morning after he did assault me, yes. And if I understood your testimony correctly, you testified that this is the maker's mark bottle that Mr. Depp sexually assaulted you with. I was never sure it was, but it was definitely that shape, felt like that shape. But you testified in this courtroom that you had not seen this bottle until Ben King provided these photographs, correct? Not in the course of the trial, I hadn't seen the photograph. You claim you had serious injuries after this alleged incident, right, Ms. Heard? Depends on what you would call serious. For me, um, you know, having a sore jaw and some bruises uh, at the time of my relationship wasn't that serious. Um, okay. Let's testify. Relative. Let's focus on 
the testimony that you gave about the injuries. Mr. Depp, as you testified yesterday, wears rings on every finger, right? Sometimes, I mean, often. And certainly in the later part of our relationship, that was more normal than not. But if he's filming or something like that, of course, he's not going to have his own jewelry on. Your testimony in this trial was, quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Correct? You need to put your microphone on, Miss. Thank you. Objection, Your Honor. Thank you. Improper impeachment. If she's going to ask her question, then she has to show where that was. And then I'll and overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. Your testimony yesterday was, quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Right, that's, Ms. Heard? That's what I testified to, yes. Okay. And he was wearing rings on every finger in Australia, correct? Not all the time, not literally every single ring every single day, but he often wears rings. Not often, Ms. Heard. Your words are, I've never known Johnny not to wear rings on every finger. That is what I testified to. Okay. And you testified that you bled as a result of this sexual assault, correct? That is correct. All right. And you testified that your forearms were cut. My forearms and my feet. And your feet were sliced up. That's correct. And you testified you had a bruise across your jaw. That is correct. And there is not a single medical record reflecting treatment for any of those injuries, is there, Ms. Hurd? I didn't seek treatment. And the day after you sustained all these injuries, Dr. David Kipper came to the house in Australia, right? Well, he came the third day uh, along with security. The day after you sustained these injuries, Ms. Dr. David Kipper came along with Nurse Debbie Lloyd, correct? Well, the f that fight went into the morning, like early hour morning, so technically that last day. Dr. David Kipper is Mr. Depp's, or was Mr. Depp's uh, physician, right? I believe he still is. But yes. he was at the time. Yes, that's correct. And he was also your physician. He also saw me. No, not saw you. He was your physician, correct, Ms. Hurd? Uh, Johnny was the client, but he also treated me. All right, let's please pull up. Do you remember giving testimony in this case in a deposition, Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. Okay. I've given a couple. If we could please uh, pull up the deposition transcript, uh, day two. Um, at 589 lines 6 through 8. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, we're going to play Ms. Hurd's deposition for the jury. Uh, lines day two, page 540, lines six through nine. If we have permission to publish it. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry. Day two, page 589, lines six through eight. All right, could you just give us a minute to get of there? Of course. 589. I'm sorry, what were the lines? Page 589, lines six through eight. Did you say 540 or 589? 589, uh -huh. lines six. Right. Through eight. All right, thank okay. you. That's thank fine. you. I have no objection, Your Honor. And he was your doctor at this point, right? Yes, he was. Debbie Lloyd also came to the house that day. Yes, she came with Kipper. Yeah. Miss Lloyd is a nurse, correct? That is correct. Malcolm Connolly also came to the house that day. Yes, that's correct. Mr. Connolly is one of the security guards, correct? That is correct. You had known Mr. Connolly for years at that point? Yes, that's correct. You flew back to Los Angeles the next day with Ben King, is that right? I can't be certain if it was uh, the next day or the day after, but somewhere around there, yes. And the day you arrived back in Los Angeles, you saw Travis McGivern, correct? I don't recall seeing Travis, no. You don't recall Mr. McGivern picking you up from the airport with Ben King? I don't remember that, no. Okay. And the same day, you also saw your own nurse, Erin Baran Filotti, that day, correct? The day you arrived in Los Angeles? I don't recall if I saw her that day. You saw Ms. Filotti's testimony in this case by video deposition, correct? That is correct. And you heard her testify that she saw you the day you arrived back from Australia on March 9th, 2015. I believe she testified that she came to dinner. 
where I was with friends. Yeah, I believe that. So she saw you that day? I believe that evening I saw her at dinner. Okay. And then you saw Aaron Berenfalati again the next day for a private meeting, didn't you? I, I'm not sure if that if that's what she testified to. I'd have to just see the records to know. You heard her testify according to her notes. She met with you privately on March 10th, 2015. She met with me at some point upon my arrival, but I don't remember the exact date. And when you were in Australia, Ms. Heard, you didn't take any pictures of the injuries you claimed to have sustained, right? I did not take any pictures, no. But you did take two pictures? Of the mirrors. I took two pictures of the bathroom mirrors that um, was the master bathroom where I was. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 374, which is already in evidence. You took this picture, right, Ms. Heard? Yes, that's correct. And this is a mirror in the bathroom in Australia? That's correct. And this black paint on the mirror is from Mr. Depp? That is correct. He wrote on the mirror in black paint after his finger was cut off, right? Uh, yes, uh, I only know that because there was blood as well as paint. So you took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his fingers, correct? This was while I was packing, when I was leaving. That, that's, that's a yes, right, the photo. Ms. Heard? That's, what's the question, I'm sorry. You took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his finger. That's correct. And you took this picture after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp, yes? That's correct. Yet you didn't capture yourself in the mirror, did you? I don't see myself in the mirror, no. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 375. You took this picture as well, right, Ms. Heard? That's correct. And this is from one of the bathroom mirrors in Australia? That's correct. This is also a picture taken after Mr. Depp had injured his finger. That's correct. And this is also a picture taken after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp. That's correct. You didn't capture yourself in the mirror in this picture either, did you? I do not see myself in the mirror in that picture. Is that because you didn't have any visible injuries on you? It's because I was taking a picture of the writing. Let's talk about the writing on this mirror. So the writing in black paint is from Mr. Depp, correct? It's all from Mr. Depp. And it's your testimony under oath that you did not write the red text that says, quote, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, end that's, quote. That's correct. Because if you did write that, it means that your husband was walking around the house bleeding from his amputated finger and you're writing snarky messages to him on a mirror, right? I don't know what your question to me is, I'm sorry. Let's please take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1830. I believe this, pic this picture is also admitted into evidence. That's correct. This is a picture of the same mirror, right? That's correct. But you didn't take this picture? No, I did not. This is the one that Ben King took. And I don't see him in the mirror either. He's, I don't believe he claimed he had injuries though. Is that right? I did not hear uh, Ben King talk about his injuries, no. So you would agree, Ms. Heard, that the black text on the mirror says, quote, she loves naked photos of herself, so modern, so hot. I had not read that yet. I mean, before, but yeah, that's what it says. But you were taking pictures of the text, but you had not read that before? I haven't seen this. It didn't make sense to me at the time when I read it in person. Okay. Again, Mr. Depp wrote that. Uh, I don't know who else would have. So Ms. Heard, just to be clear, it's your testimony that Mr. Depp also wrote the message in red about Carly Simon saying it better, right? That's correct. You know Carly Simon saying the song, You're So Vain, right? I was told that. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was writing messages to himself in the mirror back and forth. The best I can describe it is it looked like a crazy conversation. It was on the walls, it with was himself. on lampshades, it was on cushions. It's your testimony the crazy conversation was with himself. That's what it looked like from the bloody messages I found. And you would agree with me that in this photograph, the red text has been smudged with black paint, right? Yes. Okay. Let's please pull up, if we can, Defendant's Exhibit 35, excuse me, 375 again. The black smudge isn't in this picture that you took, right? That's correct. So Mr. Depp must have not liked his own message to himself. I'm not quite sure what was happening when Ben took that, the, his photograph, no. Okay. 
Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343, which is already in evidence, and play the portion from 15721 through 15854. It's a recording, Your Honor. It's, it's, and, it, it's not to get in that. It's not going to exist to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To, to, to avoid talking to me. To, to avoid escape, working the, out. That's to the, escape the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits them apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, 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 here you come. I come out. Fight, 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 crazy, escalated. I go, I split again, I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. Knock, 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 bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. Every this is what really happened in Australia, isn't it, Miss Heard? Uh, I did knock on a bathroom door on the first night. Not a bathroom door, five bathroom doors, and two bedrooms. Uh, is Johnny that right? is not an accurate historian of what happened during Ms. Heard, that uh, Ms. period Heard, of time. I'll guarantee Ms. Heard, that. that's not my question. Five bathroom doors, two bedrooms. That's what you knocked on. I that's what there. actually happened in Australia, isn't it, Ms. Heard? I was there. So that's I remember it. I knocked on one bathroom door. I came on the first night after he decided to take the, the bag of MDMA. Ms. And Heard, I went to check Ms. On Heard, and see I'm going to move to strike everything after I knocked on one bathroom she door. She can't do that. She's answering the question. Uh, not quite, so I will sustain the objection. Just answer the question, okay, ma'am? The recording we just listened to, that's exactly what happened in Australia. Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger after you threw a bottle at him. Isn't that right? That is incorrect. You're the one who assaulted someone with a bottle in Australia. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? I didn't assault Johnny in Australia. I didn't assault Johnny ever. I couldn't. And then after he was injured, he had to hide from you, right? That is in incorrect. Five bathrooms, two bedrooms. That is incorrect. And you would pursue him. That is incorrect. Because he was avoiding talking to you, right? He did that first night when and he was I avoiding, tried to talk to him about the drugs. And he was avoiding working it out. No, he was uh, avoiding agreeing to not fight about the drugs. You weren't scared of him at all, were you? I have a, uh, a mixed relationship with Johnny, and one in which I'm scared, one in which I love him very much. I'm not talking about your mixed relationship. That night in Australia, after you cut off his finger with a bottle, you weren't scared of him at all, were you? This is a man who tried to kill me. Of course, it's scary. He's also my husband. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. Do you not believe these have been admitted into evidence? No. Okay. I don't have them. We can scroll down, please. No. Ms. Bretterhoff, if you don't have your microphone on, I cannot hear you. You still don't have it on. Redacted. Oh. I need to take a look at the unredacted for a minute, Your Honor. Just bear with me. All right. I'm not admitting it into evidence yet. I would like to just okay, talk to the witness about it if ahead. I could. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. Do you recognize these text messages between you and uh, Dr. Cowan? 
I don't recognize these, no. Who's Dr. Cowan? He was um, my therapist that uh, was recommended to me from Dr. Kipper. Uh, he and Dr. Kipper worked together. He was your therapist at the time, correct? That's correct. And you had been seeing him for almost a year in March of 2015? Uh, my guess would be about six months at that point. Your text messages are in gray, correct? Your Honor, I'm going, I'm going to ask that she show her the unredacted so that she can see the text exchange back and right, forth if, you if can, she wants to talk absolutely. about All right, moving we'll pull that in redacted sure. later. Good. Thank you. We'll pull it up. Seeing these unredacted messages, does this refresh your recollection that these are indeed communications between you and Dr. Cowan? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Doctor, your text messages are in gray, correct? Yes, that's correct. And Dr. Cowan's are in blue? That is correct. Okay. If you see the text message at the bottom of the page from March 8th, 2015 at 8.29 p.m.? Yes, that's correct. March 8th is the day that you were allegedly sexually assaulted by Mr. Depp in Australia, correct? That is correct. All right. So on March 8th, 2015, you were in Australia? That is correct. And Mr. Depp's finger had just been cut off, right? That is correct. And you write to Dr. Cowan, quote, I feel so lost. I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change, end quote. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. You weren't able to change, were you, Ms. Heard? I very much wanted to leave the relationship I was in, but I didn't have the power. I didn't feel I had the power to leave. I knew I was in a very toxic relationship with Johnny, and I knew I needed to change that. I knew it was, at this point, horrible for me. And I'm I talk to my to therapist often about that. Exhibit, defendant's exhibit 371 as redacted with just Ms. Hurd's messages. All right. Your Honor, I object because she has left out the next two lines from Ms. Hurd that clarify even further. And I also think Ms. that Dr. Hoff, Cowan's. I, could you Your Honor, may we yeah, please approach? This. I, this is. So, Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit Defendant's Exhibit 371 as redacted. All right, 371 in evidence as 
redacted over objection. Yes, ma'am. We can publish that to the jury. Thank you. So you write, Ms. Hurd, to Dr. Cowan, I feel so lost. I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change. Right? And I said, I clearly can't figure this out, meaning the relationship. You didn't say that. You said, I did. Not the relationship. Your text message is, clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. What I was saying to him no, no, no. is, Ms. clearly, Heard, I can't Ms. Heard, figure this Ms. Heard, out. Ms. that's not my question. The text. Just the text. That's exactly what, you what I was saying. What you texted. Clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. That's, that's what right. I was saying. Okay. Ms. Hurd, you contend? Your Honor, just for clarification, so those two next lines did come in. They are in the redacted okay, copy. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Ms. Hurd, you contend that there's another incident of abuse in March of 2015 after you and Mr. Depp returned from Australia. Is that correct? That's correct. And this is, incident took place on March 23rd, 2015? That's correct. And this supposedly occurred in the penthouse at the Eastern Columbia Building? That's correct. You had found text messages between Mr. Depp and another woman, right? That is correct. So you confronted him about cheating on you? That's correct. And this was about two weeks after you had returned from Australia? That's correct. So this is shortly after Mr. Depp supposedly sexually assaulted you with a bottle, right? It was two weeks after he assaulted me, yes. And you decided to confront him about cheating on you? Um, I, I didn't decide to. I, 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 I wanted to. Mr. Depp's finger was freshly injured at this point, right? He had a cast on it. The top of his right finger had been cut off two weeks prior. That is correct. And he had a pin in his finger, true? I don't recall when the pin was placed. A skin graft? I'm not quite sure. He had several different procedures, and they were kind of spread out over a period of time, so I don't remember what happened and when One of those exactly. procedures was to treat the MRSA that got on his finger too, right? At some point, I knew he had an infection. And his right hand was in a bandage, right? It was casted. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was able to attack both you and your sister with his hand in that state, right? That is correct. He had a hard plaster cast on it. Debbie Lloyd was present in the penthouses when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you. Isn't that correct? That's correct. In fact, you claim that Mr. Depp threw a Red Bull can at Miss Lloyd that evening. Yes, that's correct. And you put in a sworn statement to that effect in the UK case, right? That is correct. But that's not true, is it? That's what happened. You know what a deposition is, right, Ms. Heard? I've had several, yes. Yeah, so you know what it's when someone provides testimony under oath. That is correct. You're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case, correct? That is true. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial, right? I'm going to object, Your Honor. May we approach? All right. So in a deposition, Ms. Heard, you know it's when someone provides testimony under oath, right? That's correct. And you're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case? That's correct. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial? Yes. So you heard Ms. Lloyd testify under oath that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her? I can't remember uh, if, she didn't rem if she didn't recall that or if she said it didn't happen. I don't remember. I vaguely sense she didn't recall anything. So it's your testimony that Ms. Lloyd would forget that Mr. Depp, a very famous patient of hers, threw a can of Red Bull that nearly missed her, according to your version of events? To be fair, I just don't remember if she said when she testified that she didn't recall that incident or if it didn't happen. I don't remember what she testified to. But I have a vague sense that she didn't recall much at all. 
She recalled when she testified in this courtroom that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. That was her testimony, wasn't it? I don't recall what her testimony was with regards to that one incident, no. You actually filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license right before she was supposedly deposed in this case, didn't you? Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe I did. Are you aware that someone filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license in connection with her care of Mr. Depp for failing to report abuse? No, I had no idea. You're the first person to let me know about that. It's your testimony under oath, that wasn't you? That is my testimony. I didn't even know about that until now. Travis McGivern was also present when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you, correct? He walked in at some point. And you heard his testimony that it was actually you who punched Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? It's always been my own testimony that I hit Johnny. And, and you who was throwing things at Mr. Depp. I hit him in defense of my sister. I didn't have anything to throw at him. I never threw anything at him. I hit him when he attacked me and my sister, specifically when he moved for her. That's when I hit him. So it's your testimony under oath. You threw nothing at Mr. Depp. And Mr. McGivern's lying. I have thrown things at Johnny, no, no, to no. be clear, not but not that occasion. Things. That evening. Not, that oca not, not on that occasion. So it's your testimony, Mr. McGivern, imagined that you were throwing things at Mr. Depp from the mezzanine level down towards where Mr. Depp and Mr. McGivern were standing. Well, he certainly wasn't going to say it about his client. Ms. Heard, you and Mr. Depp kept a journal together, didn't you? Yes, we did. You wrote each other messages in that journal, right? That is true. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 91. I'm only going to be showing you certain portions of this, so if we could please call this Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A. This is the journal that you and Mr. Depp kept with each other in electronic form, correct? That is correct. And if you we could scroll through, these are all entries that you made in the journal, correct? Is it done? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to move for the admission of Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A, and I've gone ahead and redacted Mr. Depp's writings as he, on hearsay grounds. I'm going to object to the move. Okay. okay. Let's start with the first page. It's a picture. Your Honor, I'm it's a picture. They haven't given me the pages yet. I'm writing them down. Okay. Sorry, Judy. Let's write them down first. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. 
If we could please publish this to the jury. 91A in evidence. Thank you. Over objection. This is a picture that's on the inside cover of the love notebook, correct? That's correct. And this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp? That's correct. And you're in Australia in this picture, aren't you? Yes, but that's much later once we returned. You can see that Mr. Depp's right hand is bandaged, right? Yes, that's correct. That was after it had recovered significantly. That's not what it looked like uh, during the incident we were just talking about. So this is a picture after the events in Australia in March of 2015, correct? Yeah, yes, that photograph was taken months later. We have the jury look at that photograph again, please. Let's now turn to page three. This is a note you wrote in the journal to Mr. Depp, correct? That's what it looks like, yes. This is actually the first note you wrote to him in this journal. I don't remember what the first note was. The date on this note is May 22nd, 2015, correct? That is correct. That was during our honeymoon period. So this is just a little bit over two months after the events in Australia in March of 2015, right? That's correct. We were back in a honeymoon phase. That was the period of sobriety I spoke about yesterday. When Mr. Depp, after Mr. Depp had allegedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? It was after the stairs and it was after the Australia incident, yes. And, and he got clean and sober and we went back to Australia. So it's also two months after Mr. you punched Mr. Depp because you allegedly thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs, right? I hit him when he swung at my sister. And this is written months later, yes. You thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs like he had thrown Kate Moss down the stairs, right? He swung at Whitney, and I had heard a rumor, a vague rumor, about that. And so it's what I thought of. In this first message to Mr. Depp in your journal, you write, quote, True love isn't about just the madness of passion or instead picking the safety of peace. No, it's about having both, falling madly in love with your friend. That is what has surprised me perhaps the most, that I have seen in you the true bones of friendship and respect. But of course, I still, perhaps more than ever, want to rip you apart, devour you, and savor the taste. Fret not, XX Slim. Yes, it's a love note. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. And you're slim, right? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, I'm now going to ask you to take a look at the very last entry you wrote in this journal, which seems to be from April 8th. That would be April 8th, 2016, correct? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't see the year written on there, and I don't recognize it yet. It would be a couple weeks. April 8th would be a couple weeks before your birthday, though, right? That's correct. Just to confirm, this is a note you wrote to Mr. Depp, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And on the second page of this note, you wrote the following. Quote, I'm sorry I can get crazy. I'm sorry I hurt you. Like you, I can get wicked when I am hurt, when I feel provoked, shattered. And last night, I was. I felt abandoned about the Lily Rose thing, felt absolutely bewildered about your not coming home on my last night here, and was heartbroken and angry after many attempts in vain on my part to rectify the situation and make amends on the last night of what was otherwise a gorgeous trip with you. I am so sorry for my part. None of this is meant to be an excuse for hurting you. Because the truth is, nothing is. There is never a reason good enough to hurt you. You are the last thing in the whole world who deserves it. Last person I ever meant to hurt. I love you, Steve. I am forever yours, Slim. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, let's take a look at Defendant's <coughs> Exhibit 423, which is already in evidence. This is a picture of you with what appears to be straight red marks on your arms, correct? 
Those are scars from the broken glass. And they're straight and red, right? I, um, I disagree with how you characterize that, um, but they are red, yes. And they're on your left arm? Yes, that's correct. And sir, do you have a history of cutting yourself, don't you? I do not. You cut your arm once as a teenager, isn't that right? No, I said I wanted to um, when I was put on birth control pills when I was a teenager, I got, I felt crazy. And I said I felt suicidal. So it's your testimony under oath that you didn't report to Dr. Hughes, your retained psychologist, that you had cut yourself as a teenager once? I said I had told my mom that I wanted to when I was a teenager. Ms. Heard, we heard some testimony from you yesterday about a trip you and Mr. Depp took on a train in Southeast Asia. Do you recall that? Yes, that's correct. That was when you and Mr. Depp went on your honeymoon trip, correct? That's correct. And that was in July of 2015? Yes, that sounds right. Let's take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 162, which is already in evidence. You were here in this courtroom, right, Ms. Heard, when Malcolm Connolly testified to taking this picture? That's correct. This is the picture, this picture shows an injury to Mr. Depp's face, doesn't it? I disagree. I've seen this, this is, picture. Uh, okay, Ms. Heard, I've seen I got this picture the answer. Thank before, you. and it, you disagree? he's not injured in it. He's not injured in this picture. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony. Fine. This one is uh, photoshopped. Ms. Heard, I have your answer. Thank you. This is the only photograph from your honeymoon that shows someone with an injury, correct? That's not true. We haven't seen any photos of injuries to your face from that train trip, have we? I don't believe my face was injured on that trip. Let's take a look at Exhibit 91A at page 46, going back to the Love Journal. This is a note from you to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. This is a note you wrote on July 22nd, 2015. That is correct. And it starts off with the words, my husband, happy honeymoon, right? That's correct. Ms. Heard, please take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A at page 67. This is another note from you to Mr. Depp in your journal, right? That is correct. And this one is dated August 1st, 2015. That's correct. And you write, that's enough. You've held this book hostage long enough. Although I can't wait to read my note, I also couldn't wait to tell you how much I adore you. What a beautiful, extraordinary, magical, memorable, wonderful, stunning, surprisingly evolving and impulsive adventure. I couldn't have imagined a more gorgeous honeymoon. I love you more and more every passing day. XX Slim. Did I read that right? That is correct. Let's take a look at the journal entry starting on page 68. This is another entry from you writing to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. And this one's dated August 2nd. That is correct, yes. And this one is a longer one, so let's go to where it ends on page 70 of the journal. And you write, quote, I hope that things said in anger and pain were just that, and that you miss and love me too, and that is what matters most to you. You may say you stand by everything you said and did, and that there is nothing you can learn from this, but I don't feel that way. And it's important for me that you know that. I love you and I'm sorry. I miss my warm, loving husband. XX Slim. That is correct. And sad, the word sad is crossed out. That is true. Next, we have a journal entry from you on page 89.
this one's this is another note from you to Mr. Depp? That is correct. The whole book is love notes. Mm -hmm. So this is dated August 15th, correct? That is correct. And here you write, quote, my love, why do we fight ever? Why? I love you more than anything else. Are we that uncomfortable with being vulnerable? Were we scared or is it something else? I don't know, but I'm sure of one thing. And if it's that I can't imagine living that I can't imagine my life without you. I love you. I will do better. I am sorry. X Slim. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. It's your testimony, this was a love journal? That is correct. It was primarily love notes and... And you know, apology notes from you to Mr. Depp? The book was more of a love note book, um, and part of that communication, obviously, since we fought so much, uh, it was important for me to... Um, you know, try to nurture as much peace as we possibly could. And when things were good, they were really good. And it was also an opportunity for you to apologize to Mr. Depp for your behavior, isn't it? I think it's important in every relationship to apologize when you're trying to move past fights. Let's look at an entry from August 17, 2015, starting on page 90. Here you write, quote, I'm sorry I shook the wheels so hard. I'm sorry we've tested the shocks and brakes to this point. God damn, I love you, Johnny. I love you. I am tied to you forever, you know that? So I'm tasked with making this work for that reason and many others, of which there are many. Let me try to fix this. Let me try to patch this. Let me try to make your heart better. You deserve it. Hell, maybe even I do. I need you. We need each other. You're my cornerstone, my heart, my all. You are my life. I hate it when we fight. I hate having you hurt. I hate that you're hurting. I love you more than anything. Let me prove it. I need you. I love you. Slim. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, another example of me trying to fix it. I was always trying to fix it. Fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior? I tried everything. I tried apologizing, I tried reading, I tried therapists, I tried everything to fix but it. But yet you couldn't change like you told Dr. Cowan, right? I couldn't change my relationship. Okay. Let's talk about December 15th, 2015 again. Aaron Filotti, your personal nurse saw you two days after the incident on December 15th, 2015. Isn't that right? She did not see me as in a medical visit. She just dropped off meds in the late at night. She saw you personally though, right? She physically saw me, but did yeah. not see me in a medical sense, the way a doctor might see a patient. She did not see me in that way. She was your personal nurse, right? She was a nurse assigned to me. I didn't hire her. Johnny did. She was assigned to you. And so when she would see you, it would be physically in person, in your home, and traveling, correct? She would sometimes see me as like a medical professional would, and then other times she would just drop off meds and physically see me like as in with her eyes. You testified that during the incident on December 15th, 2015, Mr. Depp broke the bed, correct? That is correct. And more specifically, you described that he broke the bed frame with his boot while trying to get purchase, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 509, which is already in evidence. If we could please have that published to the jury. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Sir, this is a picture that you indicated depicts the broken bed, right? That's exactly it. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp causes damage to the bed with his boot, right? He did. Is that a pocket knife on the bed there? I cannot tell what's on the bed. Did you use that to damage the bed? Uh, I did not damage the bed. Johnny's boot did when he was punching me. I could feel him slipping. Mr. you also testify that there was blood all over the pillows on the bed, correct? On the pillow top, yes. That's correct. But you didn't take a picture of that, though, did you? I did not take a picture of this. 
About a week after the December 15th, 2015 incident, you went with Mr. Depp and his children to the island of the Bahamas. Is that correct? To celebrate See, Christmas? It, uh, the, the incident was on the 15th and we went on the 23rd, I believe. While you were there, you did a photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? Uh, a few days later, I think the photo shoot was about two weeks after this assault. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 99. This is a photograph of you on Mr. Depp's island shortly after December 15, 2015, correct? Uh, no, this was taken weeks later. On the island, on that trip? It was taken on the island. On, on that, that trip. trip? Yes. Weeks later? Weeks later. December 15th, you traveled to the island December 23rd? That's your testimony? It's my recollection that this picture was taken on New Year's Eve or the first day of the year. I think New Year's Eve. And this is the photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 99. You can publish. Can we please have a zoom in to Ms. Hurd's face. Thank you, Tom. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 100. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 100 in evidence. You can publish. Ms. Heard, this is another picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Yes, this is the same photo shoot that you asked me about earlier, and this is um, several weeks later. Right. If we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. Thank you, Tom. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 101. And I'm going to move to admit and publish. Any objection? Uh, can we just have the foundation photo, please? This is a picture from the photo shoot, Ms. Hurd, that was taken on the island. This is the same photo shoot, yes. Then no objection, Your Honor. All right, 101 in evidence, you can publish. If we could please scroll. Zoom in, excuse me, Tom, on Ms. Hurd's face. It's your testimony, Ms. Hurd, that you were wearing makeup for this photo shoot? That is correct. It's a photo shoot. If we could please pull up Exhibit 102. Uh, Ms. Hurd, is this another picture from the photo shoot? I can't exactly tell from the background. It looks like it's a, the same thing, but I can't really tell without it being... This is, a, out. this is a picture of you, though, right? It is a picture of me, yes. I'm going to move to admit and publish. All right. Any objection? I, I'm not going to object because she identified herself. Uh, I just, if she could identify uh, when it was taken, that would help. Is, but I'm not going to object. I'm not no, going to object. No objection. No object. Okay, there we go. 102 in evidence. You publish. Uh, let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 103. Three. Ms. Heard, this is yet another picture of you from that Greg Williams photo shoot, correct? That is correct. This is from the same shoot. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right. 103 in evidence. Publish. And again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. And finally, if we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 104. And Ms. Heard, this is a picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Again, this is the same photo shoot weeks later. Uh, I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 104 in evidence. Thank you. Again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face.
Thank you, Tom. You testified that you and Mr. Depp got into a fight while on the island in December of 2015, correct? That's correct. And this all started because you perceived Mr. Depp as nodding off during the trip, right? I thought he was passing out again in a similar fashion to what he had done uh, the previous year. And, and when he nodded off, he spilled wine on you, correct? Yeah, two, three times in a row. You testified that Mr. Depp's son, Jack, was there when this happened, right? At the beginning, he was there. He, he was there when Mr. Depp allegedly spilled wine on you two or three times, right? He was there for that because he offered me help. Right. You also testified that Mr. Depp then sexually assaulted you in the bathroom, correct? That's correct. And you testified that after this, you needed to get away from him, right? That is correct. So you ran out of the house? That's correct. And you admit you threw something at him, right? I did throw something in at him to get away. You sat in this courtroom when Tara Roberts testified, right, Ms. Hurd? I did. She's Mr. Depp's manager on the island. Yes, that's correct. You heard her testify that she witnessed an argument between you and Mr. Depp on the island in December of 2015, right? I, yes, that's correct, yes. And you heard her testify that Mr. Depp was trying to escape you, right? I don't know if she, I don't know if she characterized it like that, but that was the gist of it. She, she kind of misrepresented it to seem like that, yes. She misrepresented it. How convenient. That's correct. Okay, and then you kept apologizing to Mr. Depp, right? That's what no, that's Ms. Not Roberts correct. said? Begging him to come back to the house with you. That's not correct. Clawing at him, she used those words. That's not correct. When she interrupted us, Johnny had me by the hair. Yelling at him. We were screaming, both of us, but uh, I don't know what she um, would have heard. And that you, she observed an injury on Mr. Depp's nose from something that you threw at him, right? I don't know what she observed. You also heard Ms. Roberts testify that she included all this information in a sworn statement in the UK in May of 2020. Isn't that right? That is correct. You put in a witness statement in response to Ms. Roberts' statement in June of 2020. Isn't that correct? In the UK? Um, I made several, I did several, I think seven witness statements, and each one contained different information as per recent filings. That's what counsel has you do in that. In and in that response to case. previous filings, correct? Including testimony from people that contradict your story? Sort of. So what you have to do is your counsel asks you to respond to things and you put it in a declaration of sorts. And that happens back and forth over the course of preparing to go to trial in that country. And that's what I did. So that was your fifth witness statement submitted in the UK? I don't recall which one I was asked to comment on Tara Let's, Roberts' testimony. I'll remind you. Um, if we could have Ms. Hurd's fifth witness statement from the UK. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to page six of your fifth witness statement. It's here that you describe the December 2015 incident, correct, on the island? Uh, I haven't read through the statement. I just don't know if I had commented on it before in a previous witness statement. As I said, there were several. But starting on page six, Ms. Heard, you describe the incident that took place on the island, correct? That's correct, but what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure if I'd describe it in full okay. in this statement. Okay. I'm going to show you your confidential schedule to the fifth witness statement that accompanied the fifth witness statement in the UK. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
In the confidential schedule to your fifth witness statement. Paragraph 1 on page 21. You describe Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in the Bahamas of December 2015, right? That is correct. And that's the first time you ever claimed that Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you in the Bahamas. That is incorrect. You only submitted the confidential schedule in the UK claiming Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you after Ms. Roberts had said that she saw you on the island chasing, clawing at Mr. Depp. Isn't that correct? That is incorrect. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 394. Your Honor, um, this is another recording I can represent to the court. This only contains Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's voices. Um, I'm going to move to admit the entire recording. I'm only going to play from 1-1744 through 1-2002. All right, any objection? Um, which, which plaintiff exhibit, Your Honor? 394. 394. I, I think I have no objection. All right, me, I'll go with that. All right. 394 in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. spilled wine accidentally on you for falling asleep and screaming in front of my kids and freaking Jack out and that's trying that fucked him up you know no it's it weirded him out he'd never he didn't fuck my kids up but it was pretty fucking it was pretty fucking weird for him you know I don't need your, uh, no, right, your clever uh, me comebacks. Yeah, no. You're, you think you're controlling your, yourself? Your you is, think you're controlling your yourself? Your character has become so clear, especially when you use them. It's embarrassing for you. I'm going to walk away now because you're actually making it, making me see you even worse. And believe me, I'm not going to be calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning after I've been ambient and think, oh, I'm going to just fucking forgive and move on. Trust me. It is gross how you're using the kids. I've done nothing but be there for them in a good way. And if you take that for granted, fine. Fine. You're right. Meet a woman who would not jump up and scream if she had been spilled on three times in a row. And I hope, I hope you're happy with whoever that is, because that would be a special kind of fucking person. No doubt. It's you and Mr. Depp in that recording, right? That's correct. And you're discussing what happened in the Bahamas in December of 2015, right? Uh, no, that's not correct. We were discussing a part of it. You're discussing when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children, correct? Uh, no, we were talking about a part of that argument. Including when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children. That's not a fair characterization of what happened. Mr. Depp says you screamed at him when he accidentally spilled wine on you, correct? I realize that's what Johnny said. Yeah, and Mr. Depp tells you that this freaked out his son, Jack. Johnny often used other people to back him up in our arguments. You don't seem too concerned about that, do you? I had a lot of concerns. You don't seem, you don't mention Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in this recording, do you? That was not the point of that conversation. If I had gotten into the details of what happened, 
to me with him, it would have been another fight. You just accused Mr. Depp of, quote, using his kids, right? In that recording. He would often Ms. use Hurt. other people, yes. And you challenge him to find a woman who will not, quote, jump up and scream if she has been spilled on three times in a row. That is correct. Not a woman who would put up with sexual abuse, right? I was pointing out uh, the ridiculous nature of him expecting me not to react to something that basic. Your Honor, would this be a good time for a break? I'm All right, we can do that. That's thank fine. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody. Don't do any outside research. We'll see you in 15, okay? Go ahead and come back at 1047 then. All right, 1047. Thank you. All right.
Jerry? Okay. Thank you. You'll be seated. All right. Your next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Hurd, you've testified repeatedly that you were concerned about Mr. Depp's substance use during your relationship, right? Yes, that's correct. And, but you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol yourself, were you? I did not use drugs when I was with Johnny, like in his presence, aside from the times I testified about with you. So you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol the times you've testified to in front of the jury, right? As I testified to earlier, I took drugs um, in Johnny's presence on those two occasions um, early in our relationship in 2013. So you never changed your own behavior to support Mr. Depp in his sobriety, did you? I did a lot of changing to support his sobriety. I tried everything that I could possibly think of. But you drank wine around Mr. Depp on a regular basis, correct? I did drink wine. And you took Mr. Depp to Hicksville to do, quote, laffy drugs like mushrooms, end quote, right? That's correct. And you testified that despite what supposedly happened in Hicksville, you decided to take MDMA with Mr. Depp on a plane to Russia in June of 2013, correct? As I mentioned, those are the two occasions. You testified that this was the last time you would make that mistake, right? That is correct. And when asked if you would ask Mr. Depp to get you MDMA in Australia, you said that was, quote, ridiculous, right? That is correct. Because you had learned your lesson the hard way on the plane to Russia. Russia, yes, that's correct. Uh, yours and Mr. Depp's wedding in the Bahamas was in February of 2015, right? That is correct. So that would have been after the Russia flight. Yes, when I did, um, when we had mushrooms on the island for my hen party, my wet bridal party before. We were not with Johnny. I was not with Johnny at the time. It was your wedding with Mr. Depp on the island, right? To be clear, we were both on the same island. We just weren't around each other that evening. We had kind of separate parties, a bridal party and a groom's party. And, and your wedding was a month before Australia, correct? That is correct. And you arranged to have drugs at your wedding, correct? Uh, like I said, we had mushrooms um, for my bridal party beforehand. On the island for your wedding? Before the wedding. On the island? On the island, yes. Okay. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1262? This is an email you sent on February 1st, 2015, correct? That is correct. Uh, yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish plaintiff's exhibit 1262. Any objection? Yeah, sure.
Your Honor, if we could please have Ms. Hurd's email published to the jury. All right, 1262 in evidence. This is a schedule for your wedding weekend, right, Ms. Hurd? No, it's not. It's a proposed draft of a schedule. It ended up being quite different. Do you that. see where it says 7 p.m. rehearsal dinner? Yes, I see that. And the next item on the list says, quote, after dance party and drugs and music, end quote, right? That is correct. So you plan to have drugs at your wedding to someone you characterize as a drug addict? To be fair, we were going to have separate parties, as I mentioned. So a bridal party before this, the schedule ended up changing quite a bit. And this is a draft, clearly, that was sent before there were a lot of changes made. The bridal so party your original and the idea, Heard, party were separate. Your original idea was to have a rehearsal dinner with your husband, the drug addict, the monster, um, and then do drugs with your girlfriends on the island after your rehearsal dinner? I realize that's what the email suggests, but that wasn't no, a plan. No, it's not what it suggests, Ms. Heard. It's what you said in that email. Right, but what I'm trying to say is that the schedule ended up changing. We ended up doing the little... So your original idea it, was to do drugs. Before. Yeah, your idea, original idea was to do drugs on an island after your rehearsal dinner to the drug-fueled monster that you were about to marry, right? The, the, as the email suggests, there, were go there was going to be weed on the island. This does not reference the cuddle puddle that I just referenced to you. You like to do drugs on special occasions, right, Ms. Hurd? I have before. And, and you did drugs again for your 30th birthday, right? That is correct. That was a huge mistake. Your 30th birthday dinner was on April 21st, 2016? Yes, it was the day before my birthday, correct. And you testified that Mr. Depp was running late to the celebration, correct? That is correct. And you asked Mr. Depp to bring you alcohol when he arrived, is that right? So the utility closet where we kept the wine was right by the elevators. And I also told him he could bring in a joint. I wouldn't bite his head off if he did. So that's a yes? That's correct. I, I told him I wouldn't be angry. Let's look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 1263. Your Honor, I'm going to ask to show, first of all, this one hasn't been produced. This has not, it's a brand new trial exhibit, so I don't have it. I'd like an unredacted copy, and then I'd like an unredacted copy to be shown to the witness. Sorry, do you have an unredacted copy? We can, we can make one, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, may we approach about Sorry? this?
I'm going to show the unredacted messages to um, counsel for Ms. Heard on the laptop because I don't have a hard copy. Okay. Yeah, could, could we, let's just pause for a minute. What's that? So, Ms. Heard, I'm only going well, to... Your Honor, I'm going to object to asking questions while I'm looking at this. No, if you could give her a moment, please. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. So it's any objection 1263 as redacted? No, no, Your Honor. All right, 1263 in evidence. So, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Heard, directing your attention to the plaintiff's exhibit 1263. This is a text message that you sent to Mr. Depp, correct? That is correct. And, and you sent this message to Mr. Depp the day you had your 30th birthday dinner, right? That is correct. And you write, quote, hey baby, bring up something to drink and or a joint. I'm in if you are, see you in a minute, question mark, XX. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then the next day you went to Coachella and consumed MDMA and mushrooms, right Ms. Heard? I did, Johnny was not there for that. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about your 30th birthday. You testified about this incident multiple times, haven't you? That is correct. But yesterday, you told this jury that you were not called upon to provide a detailed accounting of all physical and sexual abuse by Mr. Depp until February 2020. Is that correct? I testified that I had not been able to do so until February 2020 in, uh, uh, outside of the context of a cold deposition. Actually, I, I misspoke. February 2022, this year. Right. Sorry. I. I did the same thing you did. Okay. And you did some. You did that in something called an interrogatory. Is that correct? The interrogatory response was the first time that I could do that outside of the context of being asked certain questions in a deposition. And and you testified about your thirtieth birthday in this interrogatory, correct? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Nonetheless, you testified to a new detail about your thirtieth birthday for the first time in this courtroom, didn't you? Uh, no, that's incorrect. A sexual assault, no less. I had just not placed when that happened. I was, nev I was never sure if that was the same time that he did that on the night of my birthday. And I maintained that as well in my deposition. You told this jury that the evening of your 30th birthday dinner, Mr. Depp, quote, grabbed you by the pubic bone, pubic area, end quote, end quote, pushed you down, right? That is correct. This detail isn't in your interrogatory response, is it, Ms. Heard? That detail is in my interrogatory response, yes. Let's pull up your interrogatory response. If we could please bring up. Um, Ms. Freda Hoff. Thank you. May I approach your honor? Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
We can go to your interrogatory responses at page 57. These are signed under the penalty of perjury, correct? That is correct. And you testified again to this jury that this was the first time you were given an opportunity to write down everything and include all your evidence, right? That is correct. Okay. So let's go to page 57. At the top of page 57, Johnny and I were not in a good place. I begged him to make my birthday dinner. Do you see that? That is correct. Okay, so starting on page 57, you start describing your birthday dinner, correct? That is correct. Right. On page 59 of your interrogatory response, you write, Fourth paragraph down. Johnny grabbed me while holding me down, and I remember him asking me if I thought I was so tough. He asked me three, four times up close to my face. You're so tough. Are you such a tough guy, huh? You think you're so tough. What are you going to do now? I stood up at some point after getting off the ground. Do you see that? That is correct. And then you write after. I remember crying. I remember feeling exhausted and frustrated. And it hit me, meaning the realization of how sad it was that I was going to wake up tomorrow on my birthday without him. That's correct. Where in this interrogatory response, Ms. Hurd, you describe Mr. Depp, quote, grabbing you by the pubic bone, pubic area, and pushing you down. On page 64. Where? Page 64. Uh, one, two, three paragraphs down. Johnny grabbed me once, did this taunting thing on the side of the bed in penthouse three. He grabbed my vagina and held me there, asked me if I was so tough. You're not describing what happened after your 30th birthday? I am. I just had not prescribed it to that date with the limited evidence I had at the time. Only in the course of looking at the evidence, preparing for this case, have I put those two pieces together. But I've always said what happened. You were upset that Mr. Depp was late to your 30th birthday, weren't you? I was. You knew Mr. Depp had a scheduled business meeting or a money meeting that evening, right? No, I knew he said he did. I didn't know if he had one. Addicts lie all the time. So you didn't trust him? I took it with a big grain of addict salt. Okay. And Mr. Depp texted you that evening to let you know he'd be late, correct? Yes, he did text me at some point. It was a big deal to you that Mr. Depp was late to your birthday dinner, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it did matter to me. And you were upset he was late. I was. I was hurt. And when he finally did arrive, you felt, quote, invisible to him, right? I did. The day after your birthday dinner, you and your friends went to Coachella to celebrate your birthday. Is that correct? That is correct. You made a video driving to Coachella with your friends, didn't you? That is correct. I'd like to pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1264. And for the record, Your Honor, this only has um, music without any words on it. And again, it's a new one, so I'd like a copy of it. It's going to it. be played. There, There is no sound other than a Maybe song. Approach. Yes, sir.
Any objection? Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right. Okay. 12, 6, if we could please publish this to the jury evidence with a sound. This is a video you made when you drove to Coachella with your friends for your 30th birthday, right? That's correct. I'm not quite sure which one of us made the video, but that's correct. You're featured in that video, driving. That's correct. And it's set to the song Miss You by the Rolling Stones, is that right? That's correct. That was a message for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? No, that's ridiculous. You consumed drugs at Coachella, didn't you? Yes, I did. You took MDMA and mushrooms at the same time. I, I did, yes. And it made you feel sick, right? I felt horrible, yes. So you left Coachella? Yes, that's correct. You testified yesterday that, yesterday that when you left Coachella, you left with, quote, your entire group. That is correct. And you were, quote, never alone with Starling, right? That is correct. You weren't anywhere near him? Not alone, no. You sat here when Starling Jenkins testified that he collected you from Coachella when you were sick, right? He picked up my entire group. And Mr. Jenkins testified, quote, I collected her, got her in the vehicle. She didn't want anyone else to know that she was sick. Take her back to the Parker, which I assume was in reference to the hotel, alone. I took her to 7-Eleven where I retrieved hydrating fluids, Advil, and let her have those. Got her back up to the Parker, got her in the suite, and then went back to pick up everyone else. You were there when Mr. Jenkins testified, right? Yes, he was wrong. So it's your testimony that Mr. Jenkins is lying. He's just wrong. I don't know what his intentions are. He was just wrong about that. We were a big group of us. I wasn't alone with him. Isn't it possible that you don't remember correctly because you were sick from taking MDMA and mushrooms at the no. same time? No, uh, I remember everything about that night. Okay. I'd like to play for you plaintiff's exhibit 1229, which is already in evidence, at 1720 through 2128. That's what really happened the evening of your 30th birthday, isn't it, Ms. Hurd? No, Ms. that's incorrect. Mr. Depp was in bed, and then you came around the bed and started punching him. That's incorrect. You don't deny that in the recording, do you, Ms. Hurd? I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I'm not denying anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I was trying to get out of that hotel room. Uh, that was a mediation attempt. That was the recording you just heard. It was us meeting in a hotel. But you're talking about your 30th birthday. No, we're not. And you're not talking about going to Coachella and... Johnny's talking about that. I am not arguing with him about any of that. Right. You don't deny anything, do you? I'm not talking to him about that. 
going to um, publish exhibit or ask that the witness be shown exhibit 1265. This is you and your friends at Coachella, correct? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit plaintiffs 1265 and publish it. No objection. All right, 1265 in evidence can publish it. There's no injuries to you. Are there, Ms. Heard, visible in this picture? You cannot see any visible injury, no. Ms. Heard, you remember during Mr. Depp's examination, a number of recordings were played, correct? That's correct. And in one of those recordings, you told Mr. Depp, quote, I hope to God Jack's stepfather teaches him more about being a man than your fucking, your fucking left nut, end quote. Do you remember that? I do not remember what exactly I could hear of that recording. I remember I heard, heard myself make a mention of uh, Jack's new stepfather or potential stepfather, I can't recall. Jack is Mr. Depp's son, right? That is correct. And I believe that the, I was referencing a marriage that his ex-partner was going to have or getting into, I suppose. You were referencing that uh, Jack's new stepfather would teach him how to be a man because Mr. Depp couldn't. I right? don't recall exactly what I said, but it was something to that effect. Let's listen to some of what happened before you said that. Uh, to Mr. Depp. Um, if we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 397, which is already in evidence. And for the record, it's at 3504 through 3547. And then the next clip is 3635 through 4308. No, no, you're right, I don't. It's all about performance. 
Well, from the <laughs> No, I'm I, I don't regret. I don't regret. Oh, what else? What else do you do? Oh, come I, on. I Come oh, on, lay it on me. What else? What else other things do you want to ask? Can't talk you to me about your life. Go run to the next house. Oh, Every no. man does. Yeah. Go. Run through. away. I know it's hard You're to look at yourself. You're fucking ridiculous clown. It's hard. Panic fucking clown. It's hard. It's hard. You're screwing everybody it's else hard. over. Get You're right. Fucking I tried. Yeah, that's what I do. You are the most spoiled fucking brat. Yeah. And you got everybody out here almost full, oh, but it don't right. last You're long. Right. I've been sorry. here a lot longer You're than right. me. You're right. You got it figured out. You don't you have. Got Figure out what you have to offer as opposed to going out and get your kids out. You're right. That's what I do. Well, yeah. Okay. Let me do this. You're right. You're Excellent right. Excellent choice. Back to that. Well, I wonder what we else... <laughs> I wonder what else we can reach for in the last 60 minutes. Oh, no. It was four years ago. You're right. So I'm sure there's other things you can find. Go loud. No, I'm not laughing. Oh, uh, no, matter of fact, I'm laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm not. It's oh. I'm serious. I'm sure you can find other things. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. And stripping. Yeah. Well, there's always no. that. You can You're always right. go back to that. You can write a book. You can write a book. I know, minutes. you can write a book. Oh, is this going to be good for your book? Oh, should I have you sign an NDA for your book? You don't even your book. Is this going to be good for your book? Is this going to be good for your book? I'll write what hey, I want. I'll write what I have a good want. idea. How about you sell more of your journals? You don't want to sell out or anything. Let's sell you journals. Oh, wait. Hey. Hey, you know, no, yeah, you're not you what? No, 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 you're not selling out. You don't want to sell out, no, magic, Mike. No, you don't want yeah, to sell out. No one does no, 21 no. drug straight when they're in their 20s. No, you're right. That's not selling out. No. When you're in your 20s, you should really know what you want. Like I selling your journals. I don't. <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't know who the fuck I was. You're right. Go sell your journals like a real non seller. Uh, 55 year old. Or, oh, I'm sorry, 56. 2. 51. I don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. No. I don't think so. Really don't. I don't really think so. But you're right. I mean, hey, at least I didn't do like a TV show where I was heartbroken. In my twenties, God, that would be like embarrassing. Oh. If only I was with someone in their fifties that could point that out to me. Imagine, Mike, you're right. When you play a non-sexualized object, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, you're right. You got me. You got me all figured out. You don't even know what movies I've done. If only I could you be haven't like even you. taken an interest. If only I could you know, be like you. I had to if watch only your I fucking, could be like you. I had to watch your <laughs> fucking <laughs> direct and you trying to like. You're a joke. Spew You're out your fucking lines. You're a joke. You're a joke. Yeah, I'm the joke in the industry, Amber. <laughs> I'm the joke. I'm the joke I, in the industry. I, I, I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. The reruns of all my bullshit are playing too loud for me to hear you. I'm gonna just go and pedal my way back. Sorry. I can't hear you. Aquaman. Oh, oh. 21 is whatever it was. I was I don't like, anymore. I was 20. Who cares? <laughs> you fucking watch that piece of oh, shit. Washed up piece of shit. Washed up piece of shit. <laughs> Your jealousy is so tragic. Your jealousy is so tragic. Fucking like thinking that I'm going on a road with a band. You told Mr. Dip to, D Dab to suck your dick multiple times, didn't you? Yes, I did. You tell him to go run to his 15 other houses, right? That's correct. Because that's what he would do when you behave like this, isn't it? Eventually, he would go and stay in one of the other houses. You call him a sellout, don't you? I was expressing frustration uh, about 
his criticism of my career and how many problems that caused within the dynamic of our relationship, yes. So you call him a sellout and a joke? I called him horrible, ugly things, as you can hear. Sellout. We, we spoke to each other in a really horrible way. Pretty sure we just heard you speak to him in a really horrible way. You called him a sellout, I just disagree. Right, Heard. Um, you oh, called I, him a sellout, right, Miss Heard? I called him a lot of ugly things. And a joke. I called him a lot of ugly things. You called him a joke on that recording. You called him a washed up piece of shit. I think we both called each other that on that uh, occasion, yes. Mr. Depp mentions Aquaman, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? Excuse me? Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? No, Miss Vasquez, I got myself that role by auditioning. That's Mr. how that Depp works. says, quote, your jealousy is so tragic. I heard him say that, yes. You were the jealous one in this relationship, weren't you, Miss Heard? I think he was indicating I was jealous of his career. So now you've twisted it to say it was Mr. Depp that's the jealous one. Johnny's always been very jealous when I worked, when I did anything, friends. Yes, he's always been very jealous. Mm -hmm. Mr. Heard, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120E. This is a series of text messages uh, between you and Mr. Depp. That is correct. Um, I'm going to move to admit and publish these text messages. Um, Mr. Depp's messages have been redacted. All right, any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, 120E in evidence, you can publish. Starts with a text message from you to Mr. Depp on September 26, 2015, right? That is correct. And you write, Monster is back. This is him. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then in the next message, you write, quote, Ran away, first sign of trouble. This is not the man you promised you would be. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. Then the next one down, you write, Promise, swore to me you would be. That is right? correct. The non-monster. Ms. Heard, you're talking about Mr. Depp running away from you at the first sign of trouble, aren't you? No, I'm, um, I'm recognizing the clues at this point. When he would run away at the first sign of trouble, often that was a clue for me to know that he was back using again and that we were about to enter the next phase of the cycle. And you describe his running away from you as the monster, right? That wasn't what was a monster. The monster is the man who beat me up. The running away was just a, attached to that. It was a sign, a signal to me as a clue, as somebody trying to put together clues um, that we were entering in the, into that phase. But in these messages, Ms. Heard, exactly. the monster isn't Mr. Depp doing drugs, is it? It was always um, the man who did drugs and beat me up. Yes, that's always been the monster. But that's not what you're saying in these messages. That is exactly what I'm saying in the messages. You don't describe Mr. Depp being violent, do you? I do not describe that in this text message, no. So it's a cowardly monster this time? No. Okay. And going down the page, you write a long series of text messages to Mr. Depp that don't get a response, is that correct? That is correct. You write, come groan, face the shit and we can do anything. You go on a little later to say, please come home. Let's apologize to each together. And continuing on page 77, you write, not go to bed mad. And then you say, sound okay? Sound like the priority in the long run? Come home. Don't be the monster. Be the man, please. Please call me, please. Continuing on page 78. You write, I don't want the monster. I need my man. I need to talk to you. Please, Johnny. Don't force me to be something else to you. This is taking me for granted and I can never stop before this turns into something far darker describing yourself in that text message, right? The exact opposite. I'm trying to interrupt him starting a new cycle where he starts using again. He's I'm trying not responding to you, to... Ms. Heard. Yeah, that's why I'm trying yeah. to desperately stop him. 
Please answer the phone, you say. Doesn't this mean anything to you? And it goes on. And I won't read all these messages, but you're saying, please answer over and over again, right? It was very important to me. I was running out of time and I was trying desperately to stop him. He wasn't with you, Miss Heard. Exactly, which is how I knew it was about to get a lot worse. He would leave, use, and come back way worse, with way less reality, with more delusions. He'd be more drunk. He'd I'm be more under the influence. I'm going to move to strike everything after. I was trying to stop the answer that. to her question. Yeah. Your Honor, she was responding. I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a situation where you were trying to get Mr. Depp to pay attention to you. Isn't that right? No, I was trying to stop him from using. And because he ran away from you at the first sign of trouble, you call him a monster. Right? I was trying to stop him from turning into the monster. The drugs are the, are the key that opened the door. Who was the real monster in this relationship, Ms. Hurd? Lives in Johnny, half of Johnny. It's not all of Johnny. The other half of him is wonderful and beautiful and the man I love. I'd like you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120F. There's another set of text messages between you and Mr. Depp, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish. Any objection? No, you're on. All right, 120F in evidence, you can publish. This is a set of text messages and it's from October 2015. Do you see that? Yes, I do. In fact, you sent all of these messages to Mr. Depp on October 22nd, 2015, isn't that right? Exactly, the same thing was happening here. And again, I'm not going to read them all, but you start off again by trying to get Mr. Depp's attention, right? You write, please come home. I was trying to stop another bender. You write, please come home, right? That is correct. Please answer. Don't break us up. Please answer. Please. And continuing on page 97, you write, give me some peace of your heart. Please. No fight. I promise. Please. No fights. Please just pick up. Please give me two minutes. I'm dying. Please. And continuing on page 98, you write, please come home. Please come home, Baba. I am so sorry. Actually, you didn't say Baba. You said baby. Apologies. And it goes on. Did I read those correctly? That is correct. That was another time I'm trying to stop another twist off. This is what would happen when Mr. Depp would try to take some space from you, right? No, this is what would happen when Johnny had moved into the next phase of the cycle, decided to use, no, and uh, our Ms. lives Heard, were getting a lot worse at that Ms. point. Ms. Heard, I'm talking about your actions. This is what you would do to Mr. Depp when he would leave you. You would harangue I would, him. I would try Isn't that to, correct? You would, would harangue try, him. Your Honor, at least let her answer the question. I'm sorry. Interrupting. That's fine. Go ahead and answer the question. Uh, I do not think uh, I would characterize my behavior that way. I was trying to stop him from using. You were texting him incessantly. Isn't that correct, Ms. Heard? It was imperative for my life. Ms. Heard, it was very important. My question is to me. much more simple. You were texting him incessantly. I would yes try or no. everything to Ms. get a hold of him and so to stop yes. the cycle. That's a yes, right? I would try everything to stop the cycle. It was that important to me. And he's the monster for not responding to you. That's not what made him the monster. For no. needing space from you. The monster was not the guy who needed space. The not monster was who drugs. he was when he came back. Not for doing drugs, Ms. Heard. Not for being violent. Just for needing space. That's when you called Mr. Depp the monster. Incorrect. Okay. Let's listen to Defendant's Exhibit 598C, which is already in evidence. And let's not do this anymore because I'm really getting frustrated and I'm really, really, really sick of this Stop. argument. Stop. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours. Okay? Okay? Stop. Okay. Why are you saying stop? Because May he's I so, go? He's, it causes me so much stress when you leave, when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're, you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe this. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you so that you know you're causing immense stress right now when you walk away like that. 
There's no reason to be mad. Well, I'm... then say goodbye. I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Oh Stop rushing me! Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me! Stop rushing me! Stop throwing me against the wall and going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me! Remember, I'm not pushing you. I'm not rushing you. I said, I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space. Whether you like it or not, I will take it. And you will take your space. But if you keep halting I'm not doing this and continuing I'm with not the rhetoric. I'm I'm begging you to stop. I don't... Okay, stop. I'm just... I'm stopped. I'm stopped. Now I have to go. Okay? So we will speak to each other in a couple of hours. Okay? And I'll give a... Some kind of revelation makes you feel better. You know? I hope I do too. But uh, we'll just see when I get home. We'll just talk or we won't talk or we, you know, we'll finish this or we won't finish it. But this is not love. This is not happiness. This is not. This is. Please stop doing this. Please, you're causing so much fucking stress. I'm gonna die. This I'm gonna fucking die. You're causing me so much stress. Please stop. Please. I'm I feel like I have a heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please then, then what stop are you doing, why, doing it. Please stop. He's so fucking mean. Why are you with me? Bully. Stop. Please stop. I've been begging you not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation. Fucking like normal argument. And for the last hour, I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. Let's just go on with our night. I would have been able to come in with you. We would have been able to let it go in a few minutes. It would have been fine. It would just, if we allowed ourselves to have fucking normal arguments. Please, you're killing me with this. You're killing me. You're fucking killing me. <laughs> Fuck. Sean, could you, uh, please, I, I want you to just go, I want you to take your medicine or whatever. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Yeah, I much. think, thank uh, you, Sean. I'm yeah. ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry. I'm really ready. Thank That's you and Mr. Depp in the recording, correct, Ms. Heard? That's correct. You just won't let him go, will you? That's not true. We were outside of his studio and he wanted to go and use. It was a pretext. The, the, the claim that he was upset with me was a pretext so that he would go and go on a bender. I knew that pattern by the time this recording happened. Is your testimony now that you were outside Mr. Depp's studio? I believe that the recording was... he was going to go was, use? Excuse me? He was going to go use drugs? That's your testimony now? We were outside his studio, his man cave house, if you will, in the car, I believe, during that recording. And he was going to go inside and use? That was the pattern. And as you can hear from my voice, I'm very, very, very scared of entering into the next cycle under, under what I had been conditioned to understand we were at at that point in our relationship. That's not true, is it, Ms. Heard? Mr. Depp was trying to go inside his house to see his daughter, Lily Rose. She might have been over that day, but so that's not your what he was getting now? out of the car to do, and that's not what I was stopping him from doing. Okay. Let's play the beginning part of that recording where Mr. Depp tells you that he wants to go inside to see his daughter. And let's not do this anymore, because I'm really getting frustrated, and I'm really, really, really sick of this argument Stop. I'm sorry. okay so let me go and you go and i'll speak to you in a couple hours okay okay Stop. okay why are you saying stop because may i so go we'll circle back to this but it's your testimony that you were outside mr depp's studio we were in the car you were in the car outside mm -hmm. of mr depp's studio that's correct and he wasn't telling you, please let me go inside my house to see my daughter. He was indicating to you 
that he wanted to go inside to do drugs. That's your testimony. I know my testimony is that I knew what he was going inside to go do. Okay. I knew what stage of the cycle we were in. I knew the pattern spied in, and I was desperately out of time trying to interrupt that cycle. Let's go to May of 2016. Uh, yesterday, Ms. Hurd, uh, Ms. Bredehoff, your attorney, showed you certain pictures um, from May 21, 2016. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. We could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 710, which has already been admitted in, into evidence. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph taken of you on May 21st, 2016. Do you recall? Yes, that's correct. Keeping this exhibit up, we could please do a split screen, Tom, and also pull up Defendant's Exhibit 714, which has already been admitted with redactions. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph that was also taken on May 21st, 2016, correct? Yes, although the one to the right might have been taken the next uh, day. I can't be sure. The reason I say that is because there's light in the background. so. It looks like it was taken in the daytime, which means maybe it was the next day. Didn't you testify that you uh, took different lighting, pictures in different lightings that on is, May 21? That is correct, yes. Okay. And, and you're wearing two thin necklaces in this picture on the right, is that correct? That is correct. You testified that these pictures were taken the same night. The one on the right looks like it was taken in the daytime because I can see the daylight behind me. But you testify that they were taken the same day. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I testified that they came from the same incident of the same day, not necessarily taken on the same day. Okay. Let's please pull up defendant's exhibit 712, which has already been admitted. Uh, you testified yesterday, this is another photograph of you on the night of May 21. That's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, can we please do a split screen and also pull up defendant 713, which has already been admitted. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday, this is also a photograph of you from the same night, correct? That is correct. You testified yesterday that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on on both of these pictures though, isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow hued ones that go around the mirror on, and then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, I've never edited a photograph. Didn't you just enhance the saturation for one of these photos to make your face look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Baruch testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do, I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Testified it was his birthday, the day after his birthday. I believe it was. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also, correct? That's correct. And Mr. Baruch testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face, correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016, is that right? You were here. Um, that's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening, correct? I realize that's what he said. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia Building on May 21st, 2016, right? I saw her testimony, yes. And you heard Officer Sines testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No. Ms. Officer Sines testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? She did not consider this injury. Ms. Hurd, my question is a bit more nuanced. Yeah. So is my answer. Yeah, so. All right.
Tom, can we put these down, please? I think they might be confusing the witness. My question is more nuanced. You sat in this courtroom while Officer Sines testified that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? I believe she was testifying about these photographs and she said that I was not injured in them. Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Sines testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Sines said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. The red puffy face, that was your counsel's question, correct? That was she her said, testimony in the UK. That's incorrect, and you know that, Ms. Hurd. I disagree. It's just inconvenient for you that Officer Sines didn't see injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't matter right? what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016. And he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damage, but it was. You were sitting here when Officer William Gatlin testified by deposition about being called on May 21 to the Eastern Columbia building, and he also did not observe any injuries on you, did he? he and that's what he testified to. He didn't even know which one I was. No, I think we all saw on video camera, you identify yourself, isn't that correct? I had to because of how far away he was. He didn't even know, he didn't even know who he was but there after to you see. identified yourself, he looked at you. Isn't that correct? From a distance, yes. And he didn't see any visible injuries either, did he? I don't know what he saw. He testified that he didn't see any visible injuries, did I he? I would believe that he didn't, yes. You were also in this courtroom when Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the Eastern Columbia building, testified about seeing you on May 25th, 2016. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I think he said the 25th. Yeah. And Mr. Romero testified that he didn't see any swelling or bruises on your face when you were talking to him at the front desk. He wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have, even though he had a habit, because his parents taught him correctly, to look into someone's eyes when speaking to them. Isn't that correct? I know that's what he testified to, yes. You testified yesterday that you sought a temporary restraining order on May 27th, 2016, because you wanted to change your locks. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Those locks were to the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building, isn't that correct? That's correct. You changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. I attempted to. That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, 2016, Ms. Hurd? I do not know when, I do not know when James came over. Okay, let's remind you. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 304, which is already in evidence, and play from 254 through 439? 
That's you and Mr. Franco on May 22nd, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you're taking him up to the penthouses, aren't you? That's where I lived, yes. And it's past 11 p.m. at night, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure of the time it looked, it looked like that. Why don't we pull that video back up? Twenty two fifty one. Almost midnight, right? It's um, or excuse me, almost eleven o'clock at night. Exactly. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town the week of May twenty one, two thousand sixteen, didn't you? I don't know what I knew of his schedule at the time. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town on May twenty seventh when you went to get the domestic violence restraining order, isn't that right? I don't know if I knew that at the time. You knew, you knew Mr. Depp was heading out on a European tour that week, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure what I understood of his schedule at that time. You knew he wouldn't be back for weeks, right? No, that's incorrect. Let's uh, go back to that recording. It's uh, Defendant's Exhibit 598. Uh, so you testified that you and Mr. Depp were in the car outside of his studio. Is that right? Yes. And you were trying to prevent him from going into his studio to do drugs, right? Uh, yeah, to effectively start another cycle. Right. Not that Mr. Depp was just trying to go into his house to see his daughter, right? His daughter might be one of the people that was in the house at that time, but that's but neither here nor there. That your testimony is now him from entering a cycle. <laughs> your testimony is now that Mr. Depp does drugs in front of his children. Well, first of all, I know he does. Um, second of all, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have stopped him from using with his friends, which is the problem, not whether or not his daughter was there. Okay. Um, let's play, please, defendants 598 at 4948 through 5035. Okay. 5035. I'm not. I'm itching. I don't want to be doing this. I want it just to, why don't either. you just say, okay, baby, I understand. I'll go home, and you do your thing, hang out with your daughter, and then I'll see you in a couple hours, and we'll talk about it. Is it that difficult to say that? Or you just fucking hate me, and you want to be shitty about it? Please. Just fucking, it's not that difficult. Okay? I don't want to stand here in a driveway and argue with you. I don't either. Okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Sure. Please? Please. Just let me know if you're going to go somewhere. Just let me know, please, so I know. And almost an hour later, you're still arguing with Mr. Depp outside, right? I don't know how long that argument lasted, no. Ms. Hurd, you testified about seeking a domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, correct? Yes, I have. And how you wanted to do it discreetly? That's correct. That you wanted as much privacy as you could have? Yes, that's correct. And how you walked out to a sea of paparazzi and cameras and photographers, right? That is correct. And how this overwhelmed you? It was overwhelming, yes. Because you didn't want this attention on you? That is correct. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 800, which has already been admitted into evidence. This is a photograph of you taken inside the courthouse when you obtained the DVRO, correct? That's correct. And your friend Raquel Pennington took this photograph? Yes, that's correct. Because you needed to document your time at the courthouse getting a DVRO? She just took a picture of me. I, I, I'm assuming it was um, in relation to my divorce, yeah. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 801, which has already been admitted into evidence. Ms. Heard, this is another photograph of you taken inside the courthouse, isn't that right? That is correct. Were you having a photo shoot inside the courthouse while you were getting a DVRO? I would not characterize it that way, Ms. Vasquez. You have a mark on your face, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes. 
You didn't use your bruise kit this time to cover it up? No, it was the only day I actually walked out of my house without makeup on. I had to be stopped. My best friend saw me in the bathroom starting to put makeup on and told me not to. All right. Please pull up exhibit one. Yes, plaintiffs at one. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Yep. Apologies. That's fine. It's already been admitted into yes, evidence. You wrote this op-ed, right, Ms. Hurd? With the help of the ACLU, yes. And that's what you testified to in this courtroom, right? That is correct. And this was published on December 18th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Aquaman was released on December 21st, 2018, right? That is, yes, that sounds correct. That was your first big blockbuster, big budget role, right? I, I disagree, but it was the first time I had like a, a leading role in a movie of that size, yes. Well, second time, yes. What was your first time? The, the first one was the film I talked about before, I mean yesterday, um, Justice League. It introduced the character. So, you know, technically it was the second one. But you were the love interest in Aquaman, correct? That is correct. Now, at least parts of this op-ed are about Mr. Depp, isn't that right? It's about what happened to me after. You sat here during opening statements when your attorney argued that the context of your statements in this op-ed matter, correct? That's correct. So let's go through some of that context. He wrote here, quote, Friends and advisors told me I would never work again as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. That is You're correct. referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. You're referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? I'm a, in general, I'm referring to being associated with domestic violence. And you're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016, right? Are you asking me if that's what I was writing about? That's what you're referring to, correct? Can you just give me the question again? I'm sorry. You're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016. That's correct. You also wrote, quote, questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mira in the films Justice League and Aquaman. This is also referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? This is referring to what happened to me after I got my TRO, my restraining order. Against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. These questions arose only after you accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence in May of 2016, allegedly, right? Yeah, from the time I got the TRO, being associated with domestic violence. That's what it's in reference to, yes. You also wrote, quote, imagine a powerful man as a ship like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in or care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. In this op-ed, you're saying Mr. Depp is a ship, right? I'm making an analogy to a powerful man as a ship. The powerful man you're referring to in this analogy is Mr. Depp, right? Uh, I was talking about a bigger issue, actually, than just Johnny. I was talking about what we as a, um, as a country were talking about at the time of writing this, which is when powerful men in general do something horrible or something they shouldn't, how there is a system in place to protect them, clean up after them, maintain them uh, afloat. You know, this is a reference to not just Johnny, it was about what was happening as a culture when we were addressing a lot of Me Too issues for the first time. The iceberg is you in this analogy, right, Ms. Hurd? Um, I would not say that. I had, that had not, that was not what I intended, no. So this is another reference to your accusations against Mr. Depp. Uh, no, this is about what happened to me once I left uh, that relationship and got a TRO and became associated with domestic violence. Right. But it's your testimony that this op-ed isn't about Mr. Depp, right? 
It's about what happened to me after. That's it's correct. It's about your experience after obtaining a temporary restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct, among other things. But it's not about Mr. Depp. It is not about him. Mr. Depp is making it about Mr. Depp, right? Ironically. It's kind of like that Carly Simon song, right, Ms. Heard? I don't know what you mean. Let's talk about the defamatory statements in the op-ed that you also claim are not about Mr. Depp. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. This is about Mr. Depp, isn't it? No. <laughs> you wrote this in 2018, right? Exactly. And two years prior was 2016, right? That's true. Okay. That's correct. So it's not about May Johnny. Two, it's about Heard, what happened to me Ms. after. Heard, my question was May of 2016 <laughs> is two years prior to December of 2018. Correct? That's correct. All right. May 2016 is when you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence, right? I got my restraining order at that time. And you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence. Yes, that was in, attached to my restraining order, so yes. May of 2016 is when you sought a restraining order against Mr. Depp. That's correct, and, and I had to May, provide testimony for that. Right. And May 2016 is when you walked into court with a mark on your face to obtain that restraining order. Yes or no? That was the day I walked into court with a bruise on my face, yes. And you were photographed with that mark on your face, weren't you? I walked out to a bunch of photographers, yes. May 2016 is when you told the world that Mr. Depp had physically abused you during your relationship. Isn't that right? That I had to provide testimony as part of my restraining order application, yes. And that's how you became a public figure representing domestic abuse, right, Ms. Hurd? From that point on, yes. That's when you claim you faced our culture's wrath, that's right? That's when it started, yes. But it's your testimony under oath that this statement is not about Mr. Depp. It is uh, not. It is about what happened to me afterwards. That's okay. the more interesting, was the more interesting thing for me to write about. The next statement reads, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. This is also about Mr. Depp, isn't that right? Not just about him, but he is included in that, yes. He's the man you accused of abuse two years prior to this op-ed, isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, but I wrote this op-ed in the context of many men at the time that were public figures or in this public eye being accused as well. So it was a reference in general to a larger phenomenon, not just Johnny. Not just Johnny. Not just Johnny. Okay. And then you write, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. This one's also about Mr. Depp. I did not write that. Well, you've accused Mr. Depp of sexual violence in this very courtroom, haven't you? Yes, but I, I was intending to keep that private when this was published. I, I, I had not pub publicly ever accused him of that. I'm going to move to strike everything after the word yes. No, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. You may not have written this title, but you published it, didn't you? I did not publish a title. I, I retweeted the article that included the title in it because that was an article. Let's pull up, please, Plaintiff's Exhibit 3, which is already in evidence. This is a tweet from your Twitter account on December 19th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I'm, oh, it's already in evidence? It is in evidence. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So on December 19th, 2018, you tweeted, quote, today I published this op-ed in the Washington Post. Did I read that right? That is correct. And the tweet includes a link to the op-ed we were just looking at, correct? That's correct. And you can see that the title of the op-ed in your tweet is, quote, opinion, Amber Heard. I spoke up against sexual violence, right? Yes, you don't get to change the title of an article you're retweeting. And that's the title that you put on your Twitter, correct? I did not put it on my Twitter, no. You linked it to your tweet. I, I retweeted the article. But you published it. I retweeted a link to an article that I wrote. And you published it on your Twitter account. All right. I retweeted it. You testified yesterday that you didn't have any control over the title and just now of the op-ed when you retweeted it. Is that correct? That is correct. This wasn't a retweet though, right? Uh, a tweet? Perhaps not retweet, I don't, I'm not quite sure. It I was a tweet. It was a tweet. I, I misspoke, excuse me, tweet. 
not retweet. You included a link to the electronic copy of the op-ed in your tweet, right? That's what I was trying to say earlier, um, and I might have misspoke. It's like I, I'm trying to attach it. Right. So you included a link, right? Yes, to the that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So you must have seen the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you tweeted it, right? I may have. I just didn't notice it. Not very careful about what you publish, are you, Ms. Hurd? I just didn't notice the title. You didn't need to include the link to the electronic version of the op-ed in your tweet, did you? How else would I have linked it? Well, you didn't need to include the link to tell the world that today you had published this op-ed in the Washington Post about women who are challenging their rage and about violence and equality into political strength despite the price of coming forward, right? I couldn't attach it with a paper clip. No, but you didn't need to attach it at all to tell the world oh, that you had published an op-ed. No, the goal was to, to tweet about it and to provide a link so that people could read it. The op-ed is in your name, right? That's correct. So if you had noticed the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you included it in your tweet, you could have asked the Washington Post to change it. Isn't that right? Uh, no, that's not. But you didn't do that, right? You never asked the Washington Post to change the title. I didn't notice it, and I didn't ask them, nor do I think I needed to. At the bottom, do you see that there's another tweet from December 19th, 2018? Yes, I do. And in this one, it reads, I am honored to announce my role as an ACLU ambassador on women's rights. Did I read that right? That's correct. So you announced your ACLU ambassadorship the same day you posted the op-ed on your Twitter. I think right? that was always the plan, is to attach the article with the, uh, the announcement that I was an ambassador. Your Honor, if, if I may, uh, would this be a good time to stop for lunch? No, it's too no. early. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we got to keep going at least till 1230. Okay. That's okay, thank fine, you. Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday about your counterclaim against Mr. Depp in this case. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, yes, I do. Your counterclaim is based on three statements made by Mr. Depp's attorneys, Adam Waldman. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. We looked at those three statements yesterday, right? That's correct. And the first statement was from an April 8, 2020 article, right? That's correct. And that's Defendant's Exhibit 1245 that's been previously admitted. Please pull that up. Thank you. If we could please publish that. Thank you. We can scroll down to the eighth page. Mr. Depp's, excuse me, Mr. Waldman's statement is buried on the eighth page of a 12-page article. Is that right, Ms. Hurd? I don't know how many pages are here. Well, let's, this is the eighth page. Let's go to the 12th. Let's pull up, please, Defendant's Exhibit 1246, which has already been admitted. And if we could please go to Mr. Waldman's statement on page 10. And go on to page 11 of a That's Mr. Waldman's statement, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I think it's um, Mr. Waldman speaking on behalf of Johnny, yes. You don't have any evidence of that, do you, Ms. Hurd? This is Mr. Waldman's statement, right? I think it's included in the article as well. That this is Mr. Waldman's statement, correct? Uh, that a, a representative or an attorney, I don't know which word it says in the article, that it says it says very clearly that they're speaking on behalf of Johnny or representing Johnny. Um, can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 8818, 881A, excuse me. If we could please go to page eight of this article.
Sorry, Your Honor. May I just All approach? Right. Yes, ma'am. come back to this sorry miss heard okay. sorry your honor right. yes, um, let's go ahead and take this down please thanks you testified yesterday about how your reputation was before these three statements were made correct uh, yes I did you testified that your career was going very well before I think I said the trajectory was positive yes you testified you had a global campaign for L'Oreal right that is correct you testified you were waiting on a schedule for Aquaman 2. That is correct. You testified you were scheduled to do a press tour for the TV show The Stand. Press obligations, yes. And then you testified that after the articles, you were no longer actively involved in the L'Oreal campaign. Isn't that right? They suspended using my uh, material. And that you were no longer involved in the publicity surrounding The Stand after the articles, right? That's correct. And you didn't hear anything about the schedule for Aquaman 2. Correct. Ms. Heard, you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason you are allegedly no longer active in the L'Oreal campaign, do you? Um, well, I mean, other than my awareness that they can't use me because of all of the online um, attention not generated. And you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason that the stand media opportunities allegedly stop, do you? Yeah, I know they couldn't attach my name to their promotional materials because of the online stuff. In fact, there was a lot of reasons why you were no longer active in these endeavors. Isn't that right? Um, I disagree with that. Reasons that had absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Waldman's statements. Isn't that right? Uh, I disagree with that. There was a lot of publicity about your relationship with Mr. Depp around the time Mr. Waldman made the three statements at issue, right? Uh, I do not recall. A lot of really negative publicity for you, Ms. Hurd. Isn't that right? There's been an ongoing smear campaign, yes. An ongoing negative publicity campaign. It's an orchestrated smear campaign. You have no evidence of that, do you, Ms. Hurd? Just look me up, you'll see. Let's take a look at some of that. All right.
Thank you everyone for your patience. So Ms. Hurd, my last question to you was that there was a lot of negative publicity for you around the time that Mr. Waldman made these statements. Isn't that correct? I believe that they were made, uh, I mean, I believe that the statements kind of kept being attached to new defamatory, or, you know, um, articles that were like smear campaign sort of attack articles is what it. Okay. Let's go through some of the articles that were out in the press. So plaintiff's exhibit 1267. You could just publish that just for the witness. That would be great. Thank you. This is an article published on February 2nd, 2020, and the title is Hashtag Justice for Johnny Depp Trends After Amber Heard Admits to Hitting Actor in Audio Clip. Do you see that? I see that. And if we can go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1268. This one was published on February 3rd, 2020. It reads the title, Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Yeah, Do you that's see that? when his lawyer leaked an edited tape. <laughs> Ms. Heard. Do you see the title? Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Do you see that? I see the title. Okay. If we could please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1269. This one was published on March 17th, 2020. Amber Heard slammed door into Johnny Depp's head, reveals new audio. Do you see that? Yeah, these are more of the PR plans. Okay. Let's go to 1270. This one was published on March 31st, 2020. Amber Heard to be sacked from Jason Momoa's Aquaman after Johnny Depp's controversy reports. Do you see that? I do. If we can go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1271. See the title that says Johnny Depp says ex-wife Amber Heard sliced his finger off and it quote erupted like the Vesuvius Vesuvius I just don't know when that was um, I've never seen that article you can go to 1272 this one was published on May 29th 2020 and it says when Amber Heard confessed to smashing a door into Johnny Depp's head, clocking him in the jaw. Do you see that? I see that. Going to 1275. This one was published on July 15th, 2020. Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story, ex aid tells libel trial. Do you see that? This was Adam Waldman as well. It doesn't say Mr. Waldman. It actually says Kate James also says she often received abusive text messages from Johnny Depp's ex-wife, doesn't it? I just know because he threw down the article. Miss Heard, isn't that what that Mr. says? Mr. Waldman threw the newspaper Ms. Heard, at me afterwards. Miss Heard, that's not my question. What my was question your question? Is, Sorry. The title of the article says, Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story, ex aid tells libel trial. Kate James also says... Your Honor, she opened the door <laughs> by saying it was Adam Waldman. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Let's go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1276. Amber Heard admits to hitting fucking baby Johnny Depp in court audio. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? That's correct. Okay. Let's go to 1277. Published July 28th, 2020. Amber Heard's sister thought she was going to kill Johnny Depp, claims witness. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? I see that. In 1278. 
published on July 28, 2020. Johnny Depp was the victim of, a, of abuser Amber Heard, London's High Court told. Do you see that? I do see that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Go ahead and take our, our lunch recess then. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our hour lunch recess at this point. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research. Okay, we'll see you in an hour. Back at one thirty-five. Then is that fine? All right. Thank, thank you. you.
Oh, you go ready. Yes, sorry. Thank you. You'll be seated. All right, your next question. Uh, Tom, may I please have you put up uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A? Ms. Hurd, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A. Um, this is one of the articles containing the counterclaim statements by Adam Waldman. Is that correct? I haven't seen the article yet. Okay. Why don't we go to page 8 of this article? Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as a sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Is that one of the statements that you allege are defamatory? It's defamatory? That's, that's correct. Um, can we please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 881B? And if we could go to page 10 and 11. In exhibit, Plaintiff's Exhibit 881B, Depp's lawyer Adam Waldman said the various discrepancies prove that nothing Heard and her friends said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick, he told the DailyMail.com. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. But even this didn't have... Oh, apologize. You're fine.
And if we can please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 881C. And go to page 11. This is another article, Ms. Heard, where you argue that uh, Mr. Waldman's statements are defamatory, correct? I don't know if this is taken from that article because I can't see the article in full. It's page 11 of the article. And the statement reads, We have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse house against Mr. Depp. Is that correct? That one of the defam what you claim is one of the defamatory statements said by Mr. Waldman? I believe so. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, you're not aware of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldman's statements, are you? Well, it's kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered, right. to the gigs you don't get. You were not replaced in Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract, and I fought to stay in it, and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in, actually, of the final cut. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? In part. They extended and it and held me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because they couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday how Mr. Waldman's statements, quote, torture you every day. Do you recall that testimony? I do. And then, um, and that you look at them every day. I look at the um, online attacks, the media, you can't avoid it, to be honest, that those statements are often attached to. I don't look at his statements every day. And you testified that you just want to move on with your life, right? I do very much want to move on with my life. But you've gone out of your way to engage with Mr. Waldman on social media, haven't you? Uh, I have made a comment, I believe, once. I did not, I would not characterize that as engaging with him. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1266. Your microphone. Yeah. Your microphone. I'm sorry. I don't have this yet, so I'm asking for it to right be there. given to okay. me before. It's a photograph. I think it's just a. This is your tweet, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish this tweet. Relevance? Ejection. I'm sorry. Is you, what's the Relev objection? I'm sorry. Relevance. All right. I'll overrule the objection. Eight eight one C in evidence. Can we please have it published to the jury? Yes. I'm sorry. One two six six. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. This is from March 26, 2021, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, right, Ms. Hurd? 21, yes. Ms. Hurd, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. Did I read that right? Yes. We can put this down. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, since your relationship with Mr. Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? I haven't completed it yet. You're I just on stopped. level two? No, I'm on level three. You also have had a baby, right? I have. And you enjoy being a mother? More than anything. You still love to cook? I do. 
And you love to hike? I've taken a break on hiking for a minute. You have friends, right? I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Every day. You just filmed a movie in March of 2022, isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon, is that correct? Aquaman 2? Um, as I said, I don't know if I will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. You struck Mr. Depp multiple times during your relationship, didn't you, Miss Heard? There were many times I had to use my body to defend myself, and that included swinging wherever I could. If it meant I could get away, absolutely. If it meant a, a difference between a sore face and a broken nose, you bet I would. You so bet. it's your testimony under oath that you never struck Mr. Depp as the initial aggressor? Well, I, he was holding me against the wall by my neck, you know, I might be the first person to have been the, the, the first one to slap, which happened in Australia, you know, and he was choking me. But I wouldn't say I was the initial aggressor in that situation. You got physical with Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. Um, didn't seem to make much of a difference. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Miss Heard? I tried to defend myself when I could, um, but it was after years of not defending myself. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? And, Your Honor, portions of the ex exhibit were entered into evidence yesterday, but we moved to admit the entire recording. All right, and yeah. I can confirm that there's no other voices besides Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's. And I intend to play um, from 129.27 to 130.07. So I have 356A in evidence. Is any objection to the the entire 356 coming into evidence? Oh, if you may, if I may. Okay. Hold on just for sure. a moment, Your Honor. I have to check on something. Which one? Which one is the one that has? Excerpt for now, and we'll double check our notes on that because there was one that had something in that that we couldn't go, and I just can't right. find my notes on that. Oh, right we'll now. just call it three five six B for now. That's fine. And Thank you, Your Honor. Could you just give me the the times again? Yes, of course. Yes, one two nine twenty seven to one three zero zero seven. All right, and I'm just told that we already have a B, so we have to be three fifty six C. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad I lose it. I can fucking promise you I'm you know do everything to change. I promise you, I'm not gonna go around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I leave unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to and me too. I will leave you. It's fair. I can't do it. You know, and I think honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Miss Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's correct. And you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't get physical, end quote, correct? That, that's correct. He was and accusing me of instigating something in the situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it, correct? That's correct. I also explained the context of that fight yesterday. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. Your Honor, if we could in, please in play. In the meantime, I'm sorry. Um, I checked and I have no objection to the entirety of 356 right. coming so in. So 356 in its entirety will be in evidence. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. If we could please play from what's now been admitted, Plaintiff's Exhibit 356 in its entirety from 705 to 743. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking... What about all the other times you split? It, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not. Well, on a plane, I can't split. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. 
I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence involved. And that you do it at me, like at the very beginning of fights these days. And if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house, it does nothing but perpetuate the fight. And you don't actually do it respectfully. You don't. Ms. Hurd, is that you and Mr. Depp on this recording? Yes, it is. Can we please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343? And I believe that one's been admitted already into evidence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And just for the record, um, we're playing from 24601 to 24720. I said to Travis, I said, Good. no, I said to you, hey, Care. tell Travis what just happened. Oh, you told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you you figured it out. Face. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched punch you lie. And then I, I didn't punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, when you fucking have a close. You didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? Talking? How? What am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start. You are before. such a baby. Grow the fuck up, because you Johnny. Started physical fights. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You're admirable. That's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right, Mr. Depp? That's correct. And you said you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, I had to hit his body to get Ms. him Hurd, out of the door. My question was, you said on that recording that you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yes, I did. And you accused him of being a baby for not wanting to be in a physical fight with you, right? Incorrect. I accused him of being a baby for complaining about me hitting him when he was trying to get through the door. I was trying to barricade. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 368? And again, Your Honor, this is a recording of just Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Um, I'm going to move for the ex entire exhibit to be moved into evidence. All right, any objection to 368? Uh, I don't think so, no, Your Honor. All right, no objection. 368 in evidence in its entirety. Okay. It's a shitty lot. Any, anyway, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. After a few times I opened, and you know, you just commit, you just kept going, you just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times, you know, please, please, just don't, you know, and then wait, and then, then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. And I didn't, I, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And I bent down, and you either pushed or you kicked. I think you kicked the door open. I, I mean, so the door, yeah, more open, so that it would I hit did. me. And it hit no, me. I, wait, I didn't mean wait. to. Wait, I didn't know it that. It hit me in the fucking head. But I did not mean to do that. And I don't I, know what. I was bent about. down behind the door. I did not do anything to. Her. I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear that I, I don't even. That did not. It was not my intention. I, I think I remember when the door scraped my toes, I, um, I, I reacted, but this whole, d the door thing, I, I, rem I, I never did that. That wasn't on purpose. I might've done it on accident. Okay. But so let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I don't even know if I said, I mean, I might've said like, what the fuck, what, you know, Whatever, because I'd just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of a door. I'm so sorry, I did not. I'm sorry. Bro. And then I stood up. And then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Mm. Mm. And 
Sorry, I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door or hitting your head. I did not mean to, nor... You didn't uh, mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I did punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I... I I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do mean them. I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't yeah. mean? The door? No, God, no, I didn't. I'm, but punching me in the, in the jaw. I didn't. You did. Okay, I'm sorry I hit you. I did mean to hit you, but it was in, a res, in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted. And I'm sorry, it's below me. Your foot? That was why you punched me? Yeah. But. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I... Again, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was hiding from you in the bathroom. Incorrect. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? Incorrect. Well, Mr. Depp said on that recording, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. Does he? he? I don't know if he said that, and I, I didn't hear that. And Mr. Depp well. said, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. He says that, doesn't he? Correct. And then you kicked the bathroom door into his head, didn't you? No, I didn't. And, and I then you punched him in the jaw. Defended myself in that audio. You can hear it for yourself. Right. And then you punched him in the jaw. I also did not do that. I tried to make that clear on the audio tape, too. So, in futility. So Mr. Depp said, you meant to punch me in the jaw, right? Are you asking me what he said on the, yeah. on the recording? Yes, he said that. And then you respond, I meant to hit you, didn't you? I, as I explained yesterday, I was trying to get him off the door. And you said, I remember, I did mean to hit you. Meaning the door. The door was on my feet. You've I reacted this... instinctively to that. Yeah, you've heard this audio before, haven't you, Miss Heard? Yeah, we've already had this trial before. Yeah, you've played, it was played for you when you were deposed in 2016 in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp, wasn't it? That's one of the times I've heard it, yes. Okay. So you've had plenty of time to think about how to respond to this recording, haven't you? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, let's take a look at how you responded to it the first time. Can we please pull up what will be marked Plaintiff's Exhibit 1261? The next thing that I'm going to play your, your to Honor. you okay. uh, as Hugh. Right. Right. Oh, you want to come? Yeah. 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 read it into the record and I'll hand this to you. So, um, I will. So, Your Honor, for reference, and I will provide a copy of the deposition, Ms. Hurd's deposition in the divorce, it's uh, page 372, lines starting at line 5 through 377, line 12. All right, I think. Okay, let's copy it. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am.
Your Honor, with permission, may we please play? If we just get to that page, make sure everybody's at the. Oh, could you could you say the page number again? Yes, please? absolutely. Page 372, lines 5 to 377, line 1 is what I have. 12. Right. Line 12. Right. If we could have a moment, Your Honor, to read it before it's played. You. Would you listen to this, please? Do a prop, they can do it through reading the deposition, Your Honor. They don't need to do that. I asked them to take it off the screen. That's fine. Thank you. I have no objection. Can we that. please uh, start it over? The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, as Hugh. Would you listen to this, please? This is punching. It's one I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, 
So you told him in that uh, uh, excerpt that you hit him with the door but did not intend to hit him, correct? Did you say that? I, uh, I said whatever I said in that recording. Okay. I don't, um, when you play it for me, it's hard for me to remember every single And that's a recording marked as exhibit the punching. Uh, Q. That Q. Q. Would you continue to listen to exhibit Q? <clears throat> Are these from the same day? Um, I, I reacted, but it, this whole the door thing, I, 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 I never did that. That was in all purpose. I was on an accident. Let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I don't even know. I might have said, like, what the fuck? You know, whatever. That just been in the head with the fucking corner of the door. I'm so sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. Up. And then you go to the I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Yeah. That's exactly what I just told us. Yeah. And I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door or hitting your head. I did not mean to ignore. You don't need to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I did. punch me in the jaw. I meant to hit you. I did not do this thing at the door. I, I do remember. I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't mean? The door? No, God, no. I, I'm... Put punch on the edge of the jaw. I didn't... Okay, I'm sorry. So on the tape, you tell Johnny Depp that you did mean to hit him. And it also misrepresents represents okay. what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room. I'm trying to keep him out of <coughs> And then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I tried to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, was re referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you discussed it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. Never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't about it true? Man? You're smiling as that audio recording is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Miss Heard? Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time in yeah. recounting the story. Is there something amusing to you about punching your husband in the jaw? That is not what I was smiling about, and no, I do not think it's amusing. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that all you want to do is move on. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Yeah, your exact words were, quote, I just want him to leave me alone. I want to move on with my life, and he won't let me. Do you remember that? Yes, that is correct. But that's not true, is it, Ms. Hurd? It is very true. You just haven't been able to move on with your life, have you? From Mr. Depp. I'm here, aren't I? In fact, on October 11th, 2018, you actually commenced an arbitration action against Mr. Depp for defamation, didn't you? Uh, I don't recall that, no. Your Honor, may I approach? May we approach?
pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 219. And Ms. Hurd, if you could please read to yourself the first page of Exhibit 219. All right. And if you can also read to yourself the second page of Exhibit 219. Yeah. And if you can scroll down, Tom, again, Ms. Heard, just to look at that page. And then scroll down to the next page, please. And the next page. that refresh your recollection, Ms. Heard, that you did, in fact, in October of 2018, two months before you published the op-ed in this case, that's the subject of this case, you initiated an arbitration against Mr. Depp for defamation? It's not my understanding I initiated an arbitration. I, it's my understanding that our lawyers sent a lawyer, I mean, a letter to his lawyers after he called me a liar again, effectively, in an interview. And that's two months before your op-ed that was published in December of 2018, right? That is correct. And that's six months before Mr. Depp filed a case, this case against you, correct? That's correct. So you fired the first shot, not Mr. Depp. I disagree, we sent a letter. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, isn't it true that you once filled out a customs form falsely so that you could get... May we approach? Okay.
Sir, you testified yesterday that when you left the courthouse after obtaining the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, you walked out to, quote, a sea of uh, paparazzi and cameras, right? That's correct. You testified that you were surprised to see the sea of cameras. That's correct. Because it was quiet when you went into the courthouse that morning. And the divorce had remained under the radar up to that point. You testified that no one knew about your divorce, so you thought it was going to stay that way, right? No, I always figured it would come out. I just was trying to buy time. You knew the media had been alerted that you were filing for divorce, right, Ms. Heard? No, I just knew that it was impossible to do that privately, so you could just hope it was a matter of time. When you, you knew filed. they were going to be there, didn't you? No, I did not. I mean, I assume, I assume since it's a public building that there is that likelihood, or not likelihood, but possibility. But um, I was, you know, I was, I was shocked. Your publicist, Jody Gottlieb, was there at the courthouse with you, wasn't she? Yes, she was. So you anticipated that you might need your publicist? I thought the filing might make, um, well, I was told the filing was public that it would be impossible, there's no way for you to do a, a, fi a private filing. And then the second that I filed for the TRO, it would be public news. I didn't expect all these photographers and cameras to show up at the courthouse in real time, but they did. If we could please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit uh, 1280, which is a clip from your divorce deposition, and you have at uh, page, if I can alert you, you have the transcript there, page 74. Lines 22. You said 874. 74. 74. Line 22 through Page. 75, line 13. I'm, I'm sorry, just 72 lines. 74, line 22 through 75, line 13. If we could please play and display to the jury plaintiff's exhibit 1280. Ms. Hurd, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file 
or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of a domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. the copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no idea what TMZ owns. Did they owns. pay you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of ex expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, I could have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way, for years Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million? I got a fraction of what I was entitled to in the state of California, by the way. Right. What extortion? Tossa Van Ree is your ex-wife, right? That's right. She's my ex-partner. She's the one that told, that you told this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? Yeah, well, that was a 2013 fight around March, yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Ree during your relationship, didn't you? No, I did not. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. And people saw that? That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team two days after I got the TRO. Uh, not coincidentally. Can you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1279? Your Honor, may we approach? Please have that article displayed for the witness. This is an article from two years ago, correct, Ms. Heard? I don't know when this May was. May of 2020? That's not when it came out, no. This story started getting planted in after I got a TRO, after I got a restraining order against Johnny. The headline says, Amber Heard Objection, allegedly struck Objection, Your Honor. I, I think Your Honor ruled she can't say that. If you want to approach again. title reads, Amber Heard allegedly grabbed, struck her ex-girlfriend at the airport, doesn't it? Yes, and that's not true. May we approach?
So the article, the title is Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend. No, oh, overall, sir. Thank you. If I may start over. Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend Tossa Van Rie at the airport in 2009. Did I read that right? Yes, this is another example of the smear campaign. So Mr. Depp is not the only domestic partner you've assaulted, is he, Ms. Heard? I've never assaulted Mr. Depp or anyone else that I've been romantically linked to, ever. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, cross-examination. I mean, I'm sorry, redirect. Ms. Heard, did Ms. Van Ray come out after that article came in to make a public statement it was false? Of course she did. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I, Your Honor, I should be at least be Over, overruled. Thank you. Of course she did. Okay. Now, let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. Uh, so when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that, they are public record. And so when we filed for divorce, when I filed for divorce, I asked my team to file in the most discreet way, literally to put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of publicity outlets. I believe that we had been remarkably lucky following the divorce that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was trying to get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. And who had connections to TMZ? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, do you know? I who, do know. Johnny and I Honor, spoke about Your it. Honor calls for speculation. The objection. Uh, did Mr. Depp tell you about who had connections with, Ms. with TMZ? Yes, we talked about it. His lawyer, Laura Wasser. Okay. Now, I'm going to start at the very beginning here. Um, you were asked by Ms. Vasquez about why Mr. Depp won't or can't look you in the eye. And she read out, or she played a tape in which Mr. Depp said, you will not see my eyes again. Do you recall that? I do. And that was during the mediation process in July, correct? That was Objection the leading. first one. Sustained okay. the leading. When was this? That was in July of 2016. That was the first mediation attempt. We met after that, and Johnny very much looked me in the eye. Please tell the jury about the next meeting after he said, you will not see my eyes again. We met in the lawyer's office. They gave us a moment. Johnny kissed me again, held me. I cried. He cried. And then we had a short exchange, and he put a note in my pocket that said, I'll love you dead or alive, my Slim, with his new phone number on it. I'd like to bring up, Michelle, if you can, Defendant's Exhibit 1. 581L. I'm sorry. Oh. Do you recognize this objection, Your Honor? Document? May okay. we approach? Yes, yes ma'am. Could you tell the jury what the coaster was that he slipped into your pocket, what it said? It said, I love you forever, my Slim, dead or alive. And what, if anything, did it have in addition? His new phone number. Okay. And, and to be, just so we're clear, 
on how many occasions in that second mediation did Mr. Depp look you in the eye? Um, many. Okay. And when Ms. Vasquez asked you if you knew why Mr. Depp couldn't or wouldn't look you in the eye here or in the UK, you said, yes, you know. Why? Please tell the jury why. Because he's guilty. He's, he's, he knows he's lying. Otherwise, why can't he look at me? I survived. I survived that man and I'm here and I'm able to look at him. Thank you. You were asked about a bruise that was on your arm uh, from March 15, 2013. Do you recall how long before the picture you had sustained that bruise? I do. How long? Two weeks. Okay. You were asked a number of times by Ms. Vasquez if you took pictures from your incidents earlier in the relationship. Yes. Why didn't you? It was something I started doing only kind of incidentally. You know, I was commenting to my best friend. I was looking for support from my mom, things like that. I, you know, there, there was, I'm ashamed to say, never a thought that, that this would happen. I mean, not until December and my best friend taking pictures of me to capture it did that even, that wasn't even a thing. It has been suggested by Ms. Vasquez to you in your questions that you didn't tell anyone about the abuse until the TRO. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. All right. What if any? All right. <coughs> Who did you tell about the abuse during the time it was happening? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. That's not offered to, it's, and it's, hearsay. It, Sustained. Your Honor, it's prior consistent statements. It's leading. It's there. sustained. Next question. Okay. What, if anything, did you tell to anyone about the abuse? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I approach? That's on fine. Ms. Hurd, how many people have you shared the fact of abuse prior to 2015? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. How Calls many? for hearsay. How many? Overruled. Roughly about 10. 
Can you name them? Objection, yes. Your Honor. Hearsay. I think she can, it's not offered, it's just to show that she had, that she informed people before. They're suggesting Objection, Your Honor. Can anyone. we approach? This right. is, again, an approach. Now, you were asked um, whether you had consulted a medical doctor about any problems with your nose, correct? That's correct. And you indicated that you, in fact, had after the divorce, Objection correct? Objection leading. I, I, did, did, you, did you or did you not consult an a, a ENT after the divorce? Objection leading. Did you produce medical records to the defendants relating to this? Objection. Leading no. calls. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. And, and Next question. Your Honor, if we could, right. the uh, witness could be instructed not to answer until I right. lodge could, my objection. Wait for the objection, could, please. Could we bring up defendants exhibit 1077? Do you recognize this document? My, my screen is black. Yes, I do. And could you tell us what it is? That's the, uh, what my ENT, the ears, nose, and throat doctor, um, told me was Objection, my, Your Honor, hearsay. All right, I'll, when there's objection, please stop Sorry, talking. Please. Thank you. All right, I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, what, if any, you were asked if you had, it, it was suggested that you had not produced this in discovery. Is that true or Objection, false? Your Honor, leading. Your Honor, she, and, she absolutely so did it's, that. It's leading. It is leading question, though. I'll sustain mm -hmm. the objection as to leading. What, if anything, did you do to produce medical records to the defendant, to the uh, plaintiff in this case? I turned over all of my devices, and they had a, um, the, Johnny's team had a third party or someone they selected as a third party go and pull all relevant documents from those devices, which I handed over. Do you know how many were handed over? I, I, hundreds of thousands, I believe. Maybe, maybe. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Okay. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. And do you, what, if anything, did you produce to the plaintiff in connection with your consultation with an ENT specialist relating to your nose. Objection, leading, sustain. What, I foundation, said, what anything, hearsay. What, what if anything, it's not the cure-all, it's sustain. When did you see an ENT specialist? 2017 or 2016 or 17. And as a result of that consultation, what did you learn about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'm not asking her to tell what they said. Yeah, I'll sustain the objection. What, if any, production did you make to the plaintiffs of your medical records with the ENT. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. If you, lay, if you only have foundation. Do you know whether the records, medical records uh, from your EMT were produced in discovery? In Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation calls for speculation. I'm just I'm I'm asking. Overruled if she knows. Thank you. Yes. And do you, rec do you recall, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, what, if anything, 
did the medical records reflect about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Do you have injuries to your nose? Yes. Please describe those to the jury. I have um, I'm a bunch of scar to the, tissue. I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay and lack of foundation. Oh, oh, overruled. And improper expert opinion. Well, I, we'll see. she can certainly testify to. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I have um, a significant amount of scar tissue in my nose. Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Bleeding. What is any?
Did you tell Nurse Filati on 12-16-2015 about the injuries you sustained from the 12-15-2015 attack? I did. I believe I sent her pictures, too. Okay. Um, and did you text with Nurse Filati on 12-16-2015 about the injuries that you had suffered as a result of Mr. Depp's attack on you on 12-15? Yes, she guided me through a concussion check. And did you tell Connell Cowan about the injuries you sustained? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. It's prior consistent statements, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to sustain the objection at this point. Next question. Do you recall Dr. Laurel Anderson testifying that she saw two black eyes Objection, on 1217? Objection, Your Honor. Sustain is leading. What, if anything, do you recall from Laurel Anderson's testimony in this case about what she observed on 12-17-2015? Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross-examination. It's prior consistent statement. I'm going to sustain the objection. It's observations for the 12-17, the same day. Sustain the objection. Next question. May, may I approach? Okay. When in December did you see Dr. Laurel Anderson? Objection, lack of foundation. Overrule. I saw her two days after the attack. So on what day did you see her then? Um, that would have been the 17th of December, 2016, and I told her what happened. Okay. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. And w when did you uh, see Dr. Connell Cowan? I saw him the next day, December 16th, is my best recollection. Let's jump to East Asia for a moment. Um, and we saw a number of pictures from the backless dress. Um, what, if any, motivation would you have to claim that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back knowing you had a backless dress. Objection, Your Honor. I, leading, I think I can bring calls for speculation. It's still, it's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Why, would, why did you say that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back in East Asia? In the closet of the hotel room in Tokyo, um, I said that because it happened to me. And it would have been much more convenient if I was making it up to not include that detail, knowing I had a backless dress and I walked a press line and got photographed. Now, we've heard testimony about Mr. Depp uh, making a total of $65 million in 2015 and 2016 from his experts. Objection, Your Honor. Why did Leading. You, <clears throat> I haven't asked Hearsay. I mean. Why did you not ask for $32.5 million for Mr. Depp? Your Honor, leading. I said, why did you not ask? Irrelevant. I'll sustain the objection. Sustain the objection to leading. Next question. Why, why, can I just ask, why did you not ask for $32.5 million for Mr. Depp? Because I don't want Asked it. and answered, relevance. Oh, overruled, good. Because I didn't want it. I realized that that's what I was entitled to, but I didn't want it. That's simple.
the tape recording that was played that has you laughing quite a bit, can you tell the jury what the context of that particular tape recording was? I don't really recall a whole lot about what was going on. I know we had been fighting kind of ad nauseum and in this sort of loop, if you will, and I'm doing my best to um, not show my pain. That's what I was trying to do, just trying to be tough, not show what kind of pain I was in. Okay. Now, Ms. Vasquez asked you about how you got your role in Aquaman. Could you please describe to the jury how you got your role yes. in Aquaman? I auditioned, not Johnny, I auditioned. I worked really hard and I went to where we were filming the, the first movie, Justice League. I went, I think, five or five and a half months early before filming commenced when I heard that they wanted to fire me and so I put myself in the job in the Objection, gym. Your Honor, hearsay. Sustain. Keep it away. I worked what, really what hard. Said. <laughs> I worked really hard on that and had to prove myself. And I did that for even though I was only filming for six days, I was there for six months. Just worked my butt off. That's what why. Any, what if any role did Mr. Depp play in your getting Aquaman? He tried to have me fired from it. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. All right, I'll sustain his speculation. How do you know that he tried to have you fired? Objection, from? Your Honor. Calls for speculation and hearsay and lack of foundation. Founda I'm trying to lay a foundation. All right, if you lay a foundation. I saw it. I saw the emails. I saw the texts. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Next question. You were asked about Isaac Baruch and why he and and that he saw no marks. What is your recollection of your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd? I saw Isaac when I was coming or going, meaning I was leaving or arriving to the building. I saw him at a distance. We did not have a, a in-depth conversation, nor would we. Um, and I told him, actually, right after it happened, what his friend Objection, had done. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I, I don't think it's offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Stay away from what was said. Can you just tell us what, what interaction you had with him and, and his opportunity to observe you with absolutely no makeup? Objection, That's Your impossible. Honor. Leading. I'll sustain the objection. Just leading. Please describe for the jury your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd. Well, not only did I have makeup on, but I, I did attempt to kind of let him know what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. You were asked some questions about Officer Melissa Science's testimony. What, if anything, do you recall relating to Officer Melissa Science's testimony relating to your injuries? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Your Honor said I could redirect after the cross examination. Which, you want to approach? What, if anything, do you recall of Officer Sines' testimony in this case relating to your injuries and the property destruction? I recall her saying that 
she didn't feel that my the state I was in um, was enough of an injury to her or it wasn't injury seeming to her. Okay. And what about the property damage? She claims she did not see any property damage, but I walked with her over broken glass, so I'm, I don't know why she's saying that. What, if any, interactions did you have with Alejandro Romero during the week of May 22? I spoke to him briefly. Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for hearsay. Overruled at this point. You spoke to him. I, I just I spoke to him briefly in passing as I was entering, and maybe when, when I was exiting the building, but always when I was on my way out or in from being outside, meaning makeup. I had makeup on always, as I do. Why did James why did James Franco visit you on the evening of 522 2016? Mm. Objection calls for speculation. Do you know? Yes. Please tell us. Because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally lived next door, <clears throat> and I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and was happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly get. Now, the video showed uh, him laying his head on your shoulder. Can you describe for the jury what the interaction was, without saying what was said, what the interaction was that led to that? He, uh, after seeing my face, put his Objection, head Honor, on my calls shoulder. calls for speculation. That doesn't call for speculation. If she sees that he, he sees no, her. He, he touched no. the side of my I'll face, too. the objection. And, and okay. Okay. Again, Your to, Honor, if we can instruct the witness. If to, you could wait so till sorry. after the objection, to, please. All right. Next what, question. What did Mr. Franco do? Uh, on the elevator before laying his head on your shoulder. He kind of touched the side of my face and responded to what he saw. We talked about the, uh, you were shown a bunch of uh, newspaper headlines and there was one in particular referring to sexual violence uh, what, if anything, did Mr. Waldman do to you relating to that article? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. What did he do to her? Unintelligible. I, I, I don't understand well, the question. Overruled. We'll see where it goes. Uh, he was carrying the paper that had that headline on it that he leaked and threw it at me at the UK trial. We were unfortunately sat kind of, actually literally next to one another with COVID spacing in between us and he threw the paper down at me as he sat down with that on the cover. And where was that? In the UK, at the UK trial. Objection, Your Honor, this is beyond the scope. That's not beyond the no, scope. Overruled. Thank you. Why did you tweet about the makeup and Mr. Waldman? Because he was calling me a liar and a hoaxer and that this was an elaborate hoax just to get Johnny. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Next question. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. All right. We're done. Okay, all right. Ma'am, you can have a seat next to your attorney, okay? You can, you can go ahead and have a seat next to her. That's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? Is your next witness a live witness, remote no, witness, or deposition? Be deposition? Deposition. All right, so we'll get the TV set up for that, and let's just come back then at 3.30, okay? Thanks, All right, thank you. All right.
there's evidence in the tweet. I know that the the uh, the tweet um, plaintiffs three um, is a retweet or a tweet uh, that has the hyperlink of the um, online op-ed in it. Um, and I, I know that a mere hyperlink without more cannot constitute uh, republication. However, here, when there's additional content uh, that could constitute uh, republication in this matter, so there is evidence of ownership and additional content uh, that the jury could find constitute republication, and that is a factual question that does sub survive a motion to strike. Therefore, the motion to strike is denied as to count one. Thank okay. you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, are we ready for the jury? All right. All right, thank you. you. May be seated. All right, your next witness. Our next witness is Mr. Io Tillett Wright, and it starts with counsel for Mr. Depp asking questions, and then we'll switch over to me. All right, thank you. Right. Uh, good morning again. Just have you had any communications with Ms. Hurd at all, including text or emails or otherwise, in connection with your preparation for this deposition? No. Have you had any, when's the last time you spoke to her? April of last year, April or May, almost a year ago. Uh, Mr. Wright, when did you first uh, meet Ms. Hurd? I met Amber in the end of 2011. And where did you meet her? in Los Angeles. And what were the circumstances of the meeting? A friend was introducing us to each other um, so that I could photograph her for a large portrait series that I was doing at the time. And what was your profession in 2011? I was a photographer and I worked for the New York Times, I think. I don't recall exactly everything but in 2011 you were both a photographer and separately worked for the new york times as a freelancer i worked for the new york times as a journalist and photographer and what was what is your profession today i'm a writer and a producer And between 2011 and through the present, have you had any other professions other than photographer, writer, or producer? Yes. And what are those? I've hosted a television show or two. I made some podcasts. I... Two other books, uh, two books, three books, three books. I've written three books. Um, a number of things. I don't know. There are more things, but I, yeah, I've always sure. been a multi hyphenate person. To the best of my recollection, uh, we initially met at a mutual friend's house which I think I already stated. Um, that friend is also an actor and had met Amber at the Children's Hospital while they were both volunteering and knew that Amber had done quite a bit of LGBT 
activism and uh, mentioned my project to her and then invited her over to uh, the other friend invited Amber to her house so that we could all meet and um, Amber and I discovered that we liked the same books and we liked psychology and, and just you know laughed and had fun that night and then I asked her if she would participate in the photo project I think or somebody did and she said yes um, a couple of days later I went to the house that she was staying at and I photographed her for the project and then thereafter I went back to New York where I lived and I remember her texting me and saying that she was shooting a movie in New York and did I want to get lunch um, so we got lunch and we became friends. Okay, please walk me through that. We met in 2011. We started becoming friends soon thereafter. Um, in 20... Very early in 2013, um, I came to LA to spend a couple of months with my then... I don't know if she was my girlfriend or my fiance at that point, but the person that I was in a relationship with, um, in a very serious relationship with. And um, during the time that I was in LA, I spent more time with Amber. We both spent more time with Amber. Um, and I was introduced to Johnny. And uh, the summer of 2013, I ended up moving to LA during which Amber and Johnny and I got even closer, very, very close. And then um, we remained close, the three of us, for two-ish years. And then all of this happened, this nightmare, and, uh, and Johnny and I stopped being friends and Amber and I stayed friends. Um, and then Amber and I were friends up until the date that I told you that we last spoke. And at some point in time, uh, did you live on the same property as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Yes. And when was that? It was August 2013 until, um, I believe, June 1st of 2014. I moved into my own house, so nine months. And um, why is it that you... Uh, uh, left that property, left living there? Because I didn't want to live for free in someone's property and I wanted to have my own house and support myself. And for how long after that did you uh, stay close with both Johnny and Amber? I stayed close with both of them remember it it was a hmm I sometime in 2015 I think late 2015 maybe um, Johnny and I were no longer I think the period when I really stopped considering Johnny a friend of mine was December of 2015. Okay. Well, let me ask it this way. Um, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? That's correct. I, I just would like to clarify, Mr. Preciado, that's a question you already asked me, so you're asking me the same question again about whether or not I witnessed Mr. Depp assault Ms. Heard? That's right. No, I have not witnessed that. Let me ask it this way then. Have you ever personally seen Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion? No. Now, back to this same paragraph where it says, my experience of Johnny during the time that, he, that we were close from 2013 through 2015 uh, was that he could be incredibly kind, generous, and loyal. Um, can you give me examples of his kindness, generosity, and loyalty during that period? Of time. Johnny, when sober, was lovely and magical and very funny. Um, 
Johnny, when sober, was incredibly lucid and um, imaginative and I felt a kindred connection with him and a, a shared perspective on the world that I've shared with very few people in my life. Um, Johnny, when sober, understood how much influence he had over people and he was very um, kind to them about it and generous with talking to them about whatever came up. And he was also, when sober, very, um, you know, he made time for people's nervousness around him, which I witnessed on a number of occasions. He also, um, he had his his number of houses on that street and there was a constant rotation of different people coming to town who could all afford to live somewhere else or stay somewhere else who um, he would let and enjoyed having in those houses, which I find to be um, generous. In the next paragraph, paragraph six, you refer to uh, Mr. Depp's uh, struggles with respect to Oxycontin. You say that in late 2013, after a dental surgery, he became hooked on Oxycontin. Did you ever experience him while he was on Oxycontin? Yes. And while he was on Oxycontin, did you ever experience uh, him to be mean or vicious? I can't answer that with any accuracy because I don't know whether or not the times that I did see him be mean or vicious, he was also on Oxycontin. In paragraph five, where you say that um, he could he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. When you refer to drunk or high, what substances are you referring to? The substances that I saw him ingest with my own eyes were cocaine and hard liquor, um, marijuana, uh, ecstasy, mushrooms, uh, wine, I, probably some other things, but those are the immediate ones that jump to mind. Um, cocaine and any kind of alcohol would bring out a very, very ugly side of him, um, very misogynistic and cruel and other things. And um, when he would take any kind of psychedelic, like ecstasy or, or, or uh, MDMA, he would become paranoid. When he would drink alcohol, he would become paranoid. Um, yeah. I think that I answered your question. You mentioned that uh, you witnessed him having had cocaine. Did you ever have cocaine with him? No. Were there any drugs or, or substances that you uh, took with him? I don't smoke marijuana. I don't do cocaine for the entire period that I knew Johnny and thereafter, I did not drink alcohol. There was a, I think one week period um, during the peak of my breakup during which Johnny offered me um, some pain pills to get through the intensity of that situation. Um, and that was the only time that I took any substances for three and a half years. No, that's not true. That was the only time that I took any um, substances with Johnny. And uh, yeah, yeah. All, all the other things that I had stated previously about what I do and don't do are also accurate. So I'm sorry, just to, to summarize that, is your testimony that um, when you 
witnessed Mr. Depp drunk and high, you were not also either drunk or high. Is that your testimony? My testimony is that during the entire period that I knew Mr. Depp, I was never drunk or drinking or consuming alcohol at all. My testimony is that for a one, maybe two week, possibly two and a half week, I don't remember, period, um, on a sporadic occasion, I took some pain pills that Mr. Depp offered me for to get through an extreme emotional pain situation. Um, when I witnessed Johnny doing cocaine, I was not drunk or high. Other occasions that I witnessed Johnny drinking, I was not drunk or high. Um, there was a very narrow window during which I was taking some non-mind-altering uh, pain pills for a very brief period during which I witnessed Johnny drunk and high. Did you ever witness Ms. Amber Heard drunk or high? Yes. And did you ever witness her drink alcohol? Yes. Objection. Did you ever witness her um, ingesting cocaine? Are you are you asking like ever in the history of time have I ever witnessed Amber ingest cocaine? That's the first question, yes. The answer is right. no. Amber was vehemently against cocaine. Did you ever uh, witness her uh, smoke marijuana? No, marijuana is not her drug. What is her drug? I haven't spoken to Amber in a year, but as far as I know and have known her for the last 11 or 12 years, Amber doesn't have a narcotic of choice. Have you seen her ingest ecstasy? Yes, I believe so, yes. How many times have you seen her ingest ecstasy? I can think of one instance in particular when she took it um, for her birthday, like a celebration. Uh, wasn't Do you recall what year that was? I'm an event. Other than the uh, narcotics and alcohol uh, that I mentioned, did you ever witness Ms. Heard uh, ingest any other uh, drugs? Are you asking me if other than what did you ask me about? Cocaine, ecstasy, and mushrooms. I've witnessed Amber taking any other illegal narcotics, or are you asking me about prescription medications? Can you clarify? Uh, narcotics other than prescription narcotics. I don't know, but I don't actually think so, no. Okay. Amber drinks red wine um, when she's not training, or let me rephrase that. Amber, when I knew her, drank red wine in the evenings uh, fairly regularly with the exception of when she was training for an acting role. Uh, have, have you ever witnessed uh, Mr. Mi I'm sorry, Miss Heard um, intoxicated? Yes. Exactly. And how often would you estimate that you witnessed Ms. Heard uh, intoxicated? I, I don't know how to quantify intoxicated. If you're asking me how often I witnessed her drunk, is that your question? Yes. Amber is um, strangely immune to getting drunk unless she's really drunk a lot. So I didn't see her drunk very often. I saw her um, drinking often, but I didn't see her um, out of her faculties very often. Like, you know, I saw that a handful of times in the 11 years that I knew her. And how would you describe um, how alcohol affects Ms. Hurd's personality based on your experience? You know, it depends on the circumstance. If it was during a moment when she was celebrating it would make her loose. Like if we were salsa dancing, then, you know, she would have fun and be fun and, and at a party and, you know, inebriated and dancing and having fun. If she was in a stressful situation, um, I think it would just kind of exacerbate whatever the, the feeling of the moment was. 
I'm going to uh, ask you to state your name for the record. Nobody has yet. <laughs> In case you haven't recognized people. All right, go ahead. Name's Ayo <laughs> Let's bring out uh, Deb exhibit number one again, please. Mr. Tillett Wright, you were asked some questions by Mr. Presidio. And I'm going to take you back up to the first page where you were asked some questions. Um, and he, he started out with, I, I'm just gonna draw, draw your attention to paragraph four. And you indicated you met Johnny Depp through Amber. Uh, and you hit it off immediately, do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay, and then you explained to Mr. Presidio that you considered Johnny to be a close friend and you cared very much about Mr. Depp, is that correct? He became a close friend and I did care very much about him. I still care very much about him. All right. Could you please describe that relationship that you had with Mr. Depp up until I think you said December of 2015? Sure. Um, <clears throat> okay, Mr. Depp and I first met, Amber invited me over to his house with my then partner girlfriend I don't know if she was my fiance yet or not um in I think February of 2013 right at the beginning of 2013 um <clears throat> and we all hung out the four of us hung out in his house um in his living room and just kind of talked and got to know each other and it was sweet I was mostly hanging out with Amber and kind of meeting this person it was a trip to meet someone like that, you know, and see his house, and he was very friendly and very welcoming and very kind. Um, and then the next time we saw each other was at, um, Amber and I both like to do what we call family dinners. So we invite people over and cook for them and, and have a dinner party. And um, Amber did an elaborate family dinner at her house and Johnny, and I and my ex and Amber, and I believe Whitney were there. I don't know if anyone else was there. I'm sure somebody, other people were there. I don't remember. Um, and Johnny and I really connected at that dinner. We were sitting either opposite each other or just catty corner from each other. And um, I left feeling a very intense connection to him. And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Everybody probably feels an intense connection to him because of who he is. I'll forget it. It's ridiculous. And then a couple of days later, um, Amber had another dinner, some such, such a dinner at her house. And uh, Johnny and I had another really good time and, and felt very connected and really laughed a lot and whatever. And um, at the end of the dinner, as I was standing to leave with my ex, Johnny came up to me and said, um, I, I don't really know how to say this because it doesn't happen to me very often, but I think I love you. <laughs> and I felt strange because I felt the same way. And I said, that's funny because I had that same experience after the last dinner party too. And then we joked about how crazy and ridiculous that felt. Um, and we exchanged phone numbers. And then he, he texted me wanting to talk about Amber a couple of times. And I felt that it was like kind of violating her privacy. So I said that I was happy to be friendly with him and happy to, um, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something to the effect of like, you know, I, I'm happy to be, to give advice or to, to help you guys stay in concert with each other, but I don't want to um, violate anybody's privacy with the other one. And he, I think he really respected that and really liked that because he also values his privacy greatly. Um, and then, yeah, I was in LA for a couple more months and I don't know, I think maybe we hung out more during that period, I'm not sure. Um, 
I don't remember if they came to New York during the next stretch of time or what happened, but um, basically by the summer, I came back to LA to write um, and had a very bad breakup with that fiance and was going through some things personally that Johnny, um, you know, he was like, I recognize what's happening for you. Uh, it was like particularly bad anxiety related, trauma related things. Um, and he, I, I didn't expect him to offer me any support around that stuff, but he just was like, wait, I see what you're going through. Um, you know, this is my experience of it. I have the same thing and let's talk about it. And like, if you need anything, I'm here. And I was like, thank you so much. You know, I didn't really expect that. Um, and I went back to New York for, to be with my family for a couple of days or maybe a week or something. And um, it was very painful to be there. And he had said, if it's painful to be there, you know, just let me know and come back and stay here. And so I did. And I came back and I originally was gonna stay at Amber's house um, cause she kept her apartment for a number of years while they were together, even though she stayed at his house a lot um, that she paid for, et cetera. And I, she was, you know, the person that I'd known longer. So I felt more comfortable being at her house. And then um, the consensus was that I should be closer to them. And so he said, oh, there's this house that's just sitting empty at the end of the street, just stay there. And I was very hesitant because I didn't want to take advantage of him. Um, and he was insistent and he was very kind about it. And, and he said that he understood fully what having PTSD and anxiety could do and that he wanted to help. Um, so I, I went and I stayed there. And then that was, I'm guessing in August of 2013 and then in September, I think, Amber went to England to shoot a movie. Um, so I was there and Johnny and I would hang out on our own and Johnny doesn't have a ton of friends um, because he can't. And um, I would go up and hang out with him. You know, we really enjoyed each other. We really liked each other. And so we would just hang out, you know, on a daily basis, eat dinner or, or watch movies and I'd hang out with his kids and got, you know, very like into like a very sweet uncle, niece, nephew relationship with his kids. And they called me Uncle Io and- um, Mr. Tillett Wright, uh, did you ever call Mr. Depp brother or your brother refer to him as your brother? Yes, I did. Now, I'm gonna take you to paragraph five of Depp exhibit number one. And uh, Mr. Presidio asked you about this paragraph as well. And at the end of it, you had said, and he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. What did you mean by that? What I meant by that was on a number of occasions, um, I saw, you know, Amber or he, I think also would ask me to come and help. He and I had more of a like, mano a mano kind of relationship and she and I had a I, I was kind of like the only person that would check either of them um, for a while and so they would both ask me to do that with each other um, so I saw him for example I remember there was a time when um it was very late at night. I was down the hill. So I went up the hill and he was outside by the pool with a glass of what I understood to be whiskey. And she was inside crying um, and very upset in the kitchen, I think. And then I went outside and talked to him for a long time. Um, situations like that or um, and he would say things, he said something to me that night that I, I thought, that night by the pool where I thought, Jesus Christ, you know, um, things like, she's gonna, you know, all she's got is her looks and, 
you know, she has no talent and when her tits start to sag um, and her face gets wrinkly, nobody is gonna be interested in her um, for anything and she's, so she, you know, better like figure out another way to survive and shit like that. Sorry, pardon me, things like that. And um, I also witnessed him um, when Amber was in England, Marilyn Manson and Paul Bettany came over at one point and there was a great deal of cocaine and alcohol involved that I witnessed them doing together. Um, I don't specifically recall if Mr. Bettany did or did not partake in the cocaine um, or really much of anything except things that he said and his personality, but um, Mr. Manson and Mr. Depp partook in a lot of cocaine. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp tell you about his struggles with drugs and alcohol? And um, we sat on the couch and he told me a number of things. He told me about his childhood. He told me about growing up in Kentucky. He told me about growing up in very poor and how his mom was verbally and physically abusive. He told me that when he was very, very young, like 13 or something, he started drinking and taking drugs, I think, or at least drinking quite heavily. And he was even kind of like, yeah, it's crazy, I know, but I've been doing it my whole life and built like a tank. And so that was kind of the nature of the conversation. Um, and he told me that he had struggled with ever not drinking or ever not doing drugs. And he also told me that he didn't particularly enjoy being sober. Um, but that, you know, people around him were very concerned. He was very, very um, concerned with his children and he would express shame or regret about times that he had been inebriated to the point of falling down or embarrassing himself, you know, urinating on himself, things like that, when his children were around and that he was very grateful to the people who had kind of shielded them and whisked them away. And he told me that um, in his relationships with previous women, uh, his drug and alcohol use had been an issue, um, but that he just didn't really like life sober and that it was too painful to be alive without um, imbibing or, or getting high. And um, he also told me that he uh, had experienced great bouts of jealousy in relationships that had, that had also led to a lot of drinking and a lot of um, rage activities. Um, he told me that that happened with Winona. He told me that that happened with um, Kate and sorry, Winona Ryder and Kate Moss. He told me that that had happened with Vanessa Parody. Mr. Tillett Wright, um, what if any observations did you make about <laughs> Mr. Depp abusing Oxycontin? Over the course of those two years, Mr. Depp told me verbatim that he was addicted to Oxycontin. Um, and I have a text message from him where he expresses that uh, it's extraordinarily hard to kick and that it, um, I don't remember exactly the words that he uses, but he, he, he referred to it to me verbally many times as like the hardest thing that he's ever tried to kick which he's tried to kick most things. He said it was harder than heroin. Um, so he, he was very um, open and verbose about OxyContin, having gotten addicted to OxyContin. So what, if any, observations did you make uh, about Mr. Depp smoking cigarettes and joints, marijuana? <laughs> Mr. Depp as far as I could see, 
always had a cigarette or joint in his mouth at all times to the point where I was confused about how he could function. He also showed me his marijuana closet that had, I don't know, tens and tens of pounds of weed in it. What, if any, observations did you make while you were staying at Sweetser? I think you said that was August 2013 through May of 2014 with respect to uh, the type of alcohol and the amount of alcohol that Mr. Depp was consuming. When I saw Mr. Depp drink, um, it was often hard liquor. I believe it was whiskey and gin and tequila, maybe. Um, could also be vodka. I don't know. He had a full bar in his, in 80, the house that they, with his recording studio in it that they mostly stayed in. So, um, I know whiskey for sure. And there was also red wine, a lot of red wine. And when you talk about the whiskey and the red wine, how much did you observe Mr. Depp? consume on any given occasion of those? Uh, I don't know. The one occasion I know specifically was the one that I mentioned before during the argument where he suddenly had a glass of whiskey. And I remember it being like, I remember clock because I grew up counting people's drinks. I remember clocking that it was a very large pour in the glass of whiskey. If you recall those, I, I think my question was, you know, what if any observations did you make or did Mr. Depp ever tell you about him blacking out? Mr. Depp was very open with everyone that he was a heavy user. And um, <clears throat> he told me about, I know there was one instance where he had this very large house property. So if Sweetser Avenue goes like this, um, the house that I was staying at, 76 is down here, then there's 78, which is right here, and then up here is 80, and then across the street, I guess, is 82. And 82 is a very large compound. So he and I were staying, I was at 76 or up at 80, and then 82 they lived in for a brief period of time. Um, and he told me about like vanishing into 82, into the like, the property, into the like, cause it was very lush and very, a lot of trees um, and went up quite far up the hill. And he told me about kind of like blacking out and going in there on one instance. Um, he told me, I know that he told me that in, Australia, um, he had blacked out, um, but he also told me that he fucked up, so I don't know. In terms of specific blackouts, there were a number, there, uh, I think he said we're on the plane, he said that he didn't remember what had happened. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about whether he wanted to become sober and clean. Mr. Depp um, expressed to me that he wanted to get sober for Amber, that he didn't enjoy being sober, um, that it wasn't fun, and that it, it was distressing and exhausting. Um, and very hard to do. He didn't, he really, really um, resented having to be sober. Um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to be. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about his perception of Amber's role in him becoming sober and clean? He expressed a number of times that he felt like she was his leash and she was holding him back from doing what he wanted to do in terms of substances and alcohol. Um, oh, I just want to go back to another incident that I remember he told me he blacked out, was on, on the island, he went to the Bahamas. There were two different instances. One was, um, 
I guess like they had only recently met and he told me that he passed out face down in the sand while his kids were there and that um, the staff had like whisked his kids away so that they didn't see it. Mr. Tiller, right? When you said that Mr. Depp uh, used the term monster, what do you recall him saying about that? And the language that ended up being kind of settled on was that there was a side of him that was the monster and that it was not who he was, but it was something that lived within him that he had to battle. And the language that he always used was that of um, battle and battling, battling the demon, battling the monster. Um, so that the monster, you know, he would say things like, the monster will not win. Um, I will not be that type of man, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be that type of man or husband. I don't want to hurt. Uh, he would call her slim, he, I, our slim, our girl, referring to all of her friends and him and her and I. Yeah. What, if any, observations did you make of Mr. Depp, both in terms of physical as well as temperament, when you perceived him as having too much to drink? Mr. Depp would drink and or take drugs. He would get very mean, very surly, very um, paranoid, extremely paranoid. He would weave these elaborate situations in which Amber was having affairs with every man that she ever worked with and every woman she ever came in contact with. Um, <clears throat> he became very demeaning. Johnny is incredibly intelligent, incredibly smart and witty, and he would point his jokes at people, um, Amber's appearance, her talent, um, her lack of talent as he perceived it, um, why he thought that she was actually famous, which he always implied was just because of her looks. Um, and because he thought that everyone wanted to have sex with her, um, and he would insult his fans. Um, he called them, I remember he called them remoras, which is a type of, um, sucker fish that attaches itself to the hull of a ship and puts a hole in it and then sinks it. Um, he would... rail against his mother and his sister, um, sisters, pretty much, you know, anyone that he felt had crossed him or could cross him, um, he became very nasty about. What, if anything, do you recall Mr. Depp saying about uh, his mother and comparing his mother to Amber? Mr. Depp told me that his mom was viciously cruel to him during his upbringing um, and that she was also viciously like violent um, with him and with his siblings and with his father. Um, he referred to her, pardon my language, as a bitch um, and a cunt a lot. Um, and he seemed to kind of compare them in the sense that he was, he said at one point, um, something to the effect, it's right here actually, uh, yeah, I already have a mom who was a bitch to me, I don't need another one in my life. He, there was a fair bit of that kind of like, you know, my mom's been awful enough to me already. I don't need another woman who's gonna also be awful to me. What if any discussions did you have with Johnny about the fights he had with Amber? We had a lot of discussions about his fights with Amber. 
Um, <clears throat> what do you recall? In the very beginning, he expressed that she made him feel crazy, that he was so in love that it made him feel crazy. Um, the very first time that I mentioned, September of 2013, when he and I were alone together a lot, he expressed that he thought that she was cheating on him and sleeping with her co-stars in England on the films. And I said to him, or in the film, and I said to him, listen, you know, I know her, I think, pretty well, and I talk to her a lot, and I think, think if she was having an affair, I would be one of the very few people that she would tell about it, and I don't hold secrets or lies for anybody, and I would, I would tell you if that was happening so you could make your own decisions, but um, as far as I know, that's really not the case, and I think that she's really in love with you, and I think that she also is worried that you are having affairs because both of you are used to being sex symbols on earth and both of you need to just accept the fact that you're really in love with each other and lean in and be together and love each other. Um, and he told me that sometimes his jealousy would make him um, feel crazy and outside himself and that... Uh, he had to get it under control um, and that it would cause them to fight to be specific in regard to your question um, <clears throat> he told me about the fight that they had the time that I went up there are you asking for specific instances or are you asking about the nature of their fights no I, yeah, I am asking for what he told you about their fights and specific instances yes so to continue with what I was saying from before he told me about the fight um, in the middle of the night uh, when I was living down the hill at Sweetser when I, I mentioned that I saw him with a heavy pour of whiskey I went outside to the pool and spoke to him um, and he told me about the argument that they had had and that she gets mean during fights um, and that it really hurts his feelings and that he then lashes out at her um, and that, you know, she called him old and he then calls her soon to be ugly um, and talentless and that they get really ugly with each other. Um, he told me whew, about a fight that they had. Um, we went to England that September um, it was Whitney's birthday, I think. Amber's sister, Whitney. Um, and Amber was stuck working. My birthday, Raquel's birthday, and Whitney's birthday, the three people who she was closest to, um, all have birthdays in September. Raquel's just before the end of August, whatever. We're all Virgos, and um, she couldn't be with any of us on our birthday, so we all went to England to surprise her. And during that trip, Johnny proposed to her, um, and they then, I'm pretty sure that night after the proposal, got in a huge fight, um, which he all, they both told me about separately. Um, and he said, I'm pretty sure that he trashed the hotel room. Let's see. I spoke to him after I went and talked to him after their their fight on the plane um, so t t that's the that's the Boston LA plane incident is that right that's correct so Mr. Tell oh. right I'm gonna ask you about the Boston LA flight uh, incident you talked about it a little bit earlier and you just said now that you spoke with Mr. Depp about it is that correct that's correct Okay, what do you recall of your discussion with Mr. Depp about the Boston plane incident that happened in May of 2014? And I went upstairs to his bedroom, which was like blacked out, um, and I, I woke him up. I remember shaking his shoulder 
and saying to him, hey, buddy, like, wake up, which was not something that a lot of people did to Johnny, wake him from his slumber. Um, and he woke up and we had a conversation about what happened on the plane. And he didn't really remember being on the plane. He didn't really remember getting off the plane. Um, he didn't really remember much detail of anything. And, I, and he swore up and down that he was going to stop and he was going to stop drinking and taking drugs and he was going to never do it again. That was that incident. What, what if any uh, meetings related to alcohol uh, did you and Amber attend in this time frame? I, I understand because we didn't go to many meetings. Um, we, we, I took Amber with me to um, Al-Anon, which is a, it's like a sister program to AA for the family and friends and loved ones of addicts and alcoholics, which I regularly attended. So she came with me to a number of Al-Anon meetings and she also had, um, I think one or two phone calls with my dad's wife about how she dealt with helping him um, get off of his drugs and, and drink less. And um, she read a number of books about it. She was watching documentaries about it. She would listen to any radio show she could get on, like anything, anything she could get her hands on that would give her some tools for how to deal with this she consumed in that period. What, if any, communications did did Johnny have with you in this time frame about wanting to get back with Amber after the Boston plane incident? We went to New York, and um, I remember we were staying at the Ace Hotel in Midtown. Um, and... Johnny started reaching out to me. He he went eventually back to Boston to start filming again. Would have been in like the next day or two because we weren't there for that long. <clears throat> and um, he reached out to me and basically said to the something to the effect of like, you know, I have to fix this. I will do anything that I can. And then uh, while he was in Boston, he let me know. And I think he was trying to reach Amber too, but she didn't. She wasn't ready to talk to him. Um, he let me know that he had um, engaged Dr. Kipper and that he intended with every fiber in his being to get sober. And that the nature of the conversation at that point was that he, he was gonna beat this thing. You know? Please describe for me what transpired, what, what you discussed with Johnny and Amber relating to Australia in 2015. After they were, because they were married in February and they went to Australia in the spring. Um, if, if, you know, can I, if, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment and forgive me, I just want to keep it chronologically there. Um, you you described earlier that you were present for the wedding, correct, in February of 2015? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you also had discussed uh, about Amber wanting Johnny to be sober for the wedding. What, if any, observations did you make about Johnny uh, at the ceremony and with respect to whether he was sober and clean? You know... I don't actually know whether Johnny was, I don't think Johnny was drinking on the day of their wedding. I really don't actually think he was. Let me rephrase that, before the ceremony on the day of their wedding. Because I was going back and forth between their um, respective like private preparation quarters where they were getting ready because I was technically her best man and his son Jack was his best man, but I wasn't one of the girls and felt more comfortable over there with them, but I was helping all the girls. So I was running back and forth on this golf cart between, I was also taking pictures. I was one of two people who had, was friends with them that had worked as photographers, so I volunteered to take pictures. So I was, um, very intimately with Johnny and Jack leading up to the wedding and he wasn't drinking I don't think I don't I don't remember seeing him drink and then let me ask you this 
after the ceremony, as you were walking to the reception, yeah. what, if anything, did Johnny Depp say to you about Amber? As we were walking back from the ceremony, um, we were coming into Cafe Los Cabrones, which is the, where the party was happening. And I was walking with Johnny and congratulating him that they pulled it off and that they, f they did it, you know? And he said, um, we're married. Now I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. So I'm going to now turn your direction to Australia, uh, roughly a, a month later after the wedding. Um, you, were, you weren't present in Australia with uh, Amber and Johnny, correct? That's correct. I'm showing you what has been marked as exhibit number three. Do you recognize anybody in this picture? I do, yeah, myself and Miss Heard. I do, yeah. Please describe what you see. I see a number of long, thin cuts. And what, if any, similarity are those to the ones you just described uh, having seen after Amber returned from Australia? Very similar. All right. And are they the same? Were they different ones? I would have no way of knowing if they're the same or different ones, but they're similarly long, skinny cuts like the ones that I saw after she came back from Australia. I'm going to show, Mr. Tellerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number five. Um, and it's a text message exchange. Do you recognize uh, this text message number here below Arrow's Arc? That's my old phone number, yes. Okay, so so is this, does this represent a text message exchange between you and Amber Heard on 12-16-2015? Yes, it does. Okay, and I'm going to start you at the top with the blue. It says, I need you. Do you recognize who is sending that message? Yeah. Mr. Tillerett, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number six. Do you recognize the person in this photo? Yes, I do. Please describe what you see in this picture. I see uh, Amber Heard, and I see an injury to Amber's scalp. Okay. And what, if anything, do you recall about seeing anything similar to that when you arrived? in December 2015 at Amber's Penthouse. I remember this being one of the injuries that I was shown when I arrived at uh, Penthouse 3 at the Eastern Building on December 16th, 2016. And does this picture that's marked as exhibit number six accurately depict the what you recall seeing? I remember this being one of I think maybe two scalp injuries that there were. I remember there was another one as well, but I could be mistaken. I believe there was another one was on a different part of her head as well. Do you recognize uh, the picture that is set forth as uh, exhibit number seven? Yes, I do. Please describe for me what what is depicted in this picture that you recognize. This was a picture of Amber's scalp and does it accurate? Does this accurately uh, depict what you saw uh, when you were shown it, uh, as you testified earlier in December 2015? Yes, it does. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number eight. Uh, do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please describe what is depicted there. This is Amber Heard's face. Uh, with a very swollen lip. Uh, and does this uh, accurately depict what you observed when you arrived at Amber Heard's penthouse in December 2015? Yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number nine. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please describe. This is the clump of hair that I was shown, I believe when I arrived at Penthouse 3 on the night of December 16th, 2015. And does this accurately and genuinely depict the scene that you recall seeing? Yes, it does. Thank you.
Now, did what what if any plans was there as of December 16, 17 of 2015 for Amber to be uh, spending Christmas with Mr. Depp and his kids? Do you recall? Getting the pictures down while we talk. Yes, I do recall. Um, there was a plan for um, Johnny and Amber and Lily Rose and Jack and uh, Raquel and her boyfriend or fiance at the time, Josh, um, to go to the Bahamas. Oh, and Raquel's mom and Amber's parents to go to the Bahamas and spend Christmas on the island together. Um, yeah. Mr. Tillett-Wright, I'm going to ask you, what if any conversations did you have with Johnny Depp about the December 15 incident? I don't think that he and I, I don't know that he and I had a direct conversation about it. I'm not sure if he and I had a direct so what if any, I'm going to show you, Mr. Teller, right, what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 16. It's a text message exchange dated 2-10-2016. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. It's a text exchange between me and Amber Heard about a video that she sent me. Okay. Now, it starts out, hi, uh, Steve left me a voicemail at 5 a.m., and that's from you, correct? That's correct. Do you remember what the voicemail message was? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Johnny called me at five in the morning and left me a voicemail in the character of um, some kind of management of like a property manager. Um, and he said something about, yes, hello, this is management. And... Um, I don't remember what he said, but it was something to do with like, we have a situation that we need to change out the something. And it was just a lengthy, just off the wall, nutbag ramble in the character of management. Mr. Tillerwright, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 17. And then Alex, I'm going to ask you to play this. I just woke up and you were so sweet and nice. We were not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. Um, no, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this. You got this no, going. I just started it. Oh, really? Yeah. Really?
Thank you, Alex. You can take this down now. Mr. Tillerwright, do you recognize that video? Yes, I do. Was that the video that Amber sent to you on the text message exchange on February 10th, 2016? Yes, it was. Do you recall watching that video on February 10, 2016? Yes, I recall watching that video at the time that I received those text messages. So I'm going to take you to 21 May, 2016. What do you recall with respect to a telephone call you received from Amber? Sure. Um, I was in New York. Um, I was there visiting family. Um, I was in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I was walking down Manhattan Avenue and I got I believe a text message from Amber that said something to the effect of like, can you talk? And so I called and I was walking down the street as this happened. Um, she put me on speakerphone. So I was talking to both of them. He just stopped by to pick up some of his stuff. <clears throat> and he has a theory that he Either he wants to ask you about or I, and I said, okay, sure. And hello, Johnny, like, you know. And he, I think it was he said or she said, um, Johnny thinks that you and I together defecated on his pillow. I think the words were used were um, shit on his pillow. So I started laughing and, and I just, I, I was laughing, she was laughing. And, and when I realized that he was serious, I was like, okay, look, you know, first of all, I wasn't there that day. And, and so he got very agitated by the fact that she and I thought it was funny and he started to get um, more and more agitated and I could hear him walk away from the phone. He came clomping back down the stairs. And I heard like a noise and then the phone dropped and um, he said to her, oh, you think I hit you? You think I fucking hit you? What if I peel your fucking hair back? And then I heard the phone drop again, and then I heard her scream. I remember her screaming. And I hung up the phone, and I called Raquel immediately because I know that she lives one door away, and would her and her boyfriend Josh, who's a big dude, would be able to get there the fastest. And uh, I, I called her, texted her right away, and I hung up with her and immediately called 911 in New York. And then I called <clears throat> a friend of mine in LA who I knew had met Amber a number of times. And I think I may have placed a second call to NYPD. Now I'm all frazzled and I don't remember, but I think I called NYPD. Mr. Waldman made some statements in April and June of 2020 that that quote Amber Heard and her friends in the media used fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield depending on their needs they have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as the sword inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp that was made on April 8 2020 what if any impact did that have on Amber based on your observations? Amber retreated. Amber became <sighs> isolated, um, embattled, extraordinarily uh, distressed. And then on June 24, 2020, Waldman accused Amber Heard of committing a, quote, abuse hoax against Depp. 
What were your observations of how this impacted him? I think that my previous statement encompassed that. During the time that you were friends with Johnny and you were speaking with him up until you, test, you testified December of 2015, what, if anything, did Johnny Depp ever tell you about Amber Heard being physically violent to him? Nothing ever at any point. Do you agree with me that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard uh, had many verbal arguments? Yes, I do. And you were a witness to a lot of those verbal arguments, correct? I was a witness to some verbal arguments. Okay. And did you ever hear Ms. Heard say anything mean to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. And did you ever hear Ms. Heard say anything vicious to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. So would you agree with me that when they argued, they were mean and vicious to one another in what they said? I would categorize it very differently, sir. Well, you testified that you heard Ms. Heard say mean and vicious things to Mr. Depp when they argued and vice versa. Is that accurate? Yes. And although you witnessed arguments, verbal arguments between the two of them where they exchanged mean and vicious statements, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? No, I never saw either of them physically assault the other ones. Did you ever experience him become violent as a result of or because of smoking cigarettes or joints? As I've already explained to you probably eight times, I've never seen Mr. Depp become physically violent with Ms. Heard. So if that's what you're asking me, if he smoked a cigarette and that made him violent, I think you know that that's ridiculous, and the answer is, again, no. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp become violent in any manner uh, on account of him smoking cigarettes or joints? If you want my honest answer, my honest answer is that Mr. Depp mixed substances constantly, and I keep trying to tell you that. He mixed all kinds of things together when he got crazy and violent. So, and upset and paranoid. So, and I never knew what he had taken. When you say, when you say when he got violent, when did you see him get violent? I saw, I saw Mr. Depp throw glasses and dishware on at least two occasions, which I would characterize as physically violent. And do I know if he'd smoked marijuana or cigarettes? Before that, I don't know. When were those two occasions? Sometime during the time that I was living in Switzerland. And, and one sets at the Eastern Building. And prior to throwing those dishes, did you witness him um, imbibing any drugs or alcohol? I couldn't tell you, but seeing as Mr. Depp always was smoking cigarettes and marijuana, my assumption would be yes. Okay. Do you recall um, when Ms. Bredenhoff showed you a picture of a clump of hair on the floor? Yes. Okay. When you saw that, that was more than a day after um, it was allegedly pulled from her head by Mr. Depp, is that right? Well, if you want to get technical, my understanding was that their fight happened uh, very late at night, uh, which is technically the morning of the 16th. And I arrived at her house around midnight, the night of the 16th. So technically, it's not more than a day after. It's in the same 24-hour period. So technically, the answer to your question is no. Okay. So... I'm just talking about the hair on the ground that you saw. When you saw it, was it your understanding that it had been there for more than 20 hours? 
I have no idea what time their fight started or ended, so I don't know if it was 20 hours or 16 hours or 13 hours, but my understanding, again, was that they had gotten into a fight sometime in the morning of the 16th slash late at night on the 15th. I don't know at what point during the which that during that fight in which the clump of hair was ripped out of her head, but it happened sometime then and there. So yeah, sure. My my understanding was that that clump of hair had not been moved since it was ripped out of her head. All right. Complete. All right. Do you, what's your next, who's your next witness? We, we have another uh, video deposition, Raquel Pennington. It, it's a long one, so we could listen to some of it. All right, let's we'll go, go start. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and start it today. At least get 30 minutes in. If we could. That's okay. fine. Yeah. All right. And, Your Honor, just for your benefit and the jury's benefit, the questioning starts with Ms. Vasquez on behalf of Mr. Depp, and then I question Ms. Pennington at some point, which will probably be tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have you state your name for the record? Raquel Pennington. Uh, in what city and state do you currently reside? Los Angeles, California. You've been deposed before, right? Yes. And you were deposed in Ms. Hurd's divorce proceeding for Mr. Depp, is that correct? Yes. Have you been deposed in any other matter? No. What was the purpose of the declaration that you submitted during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's divorce? The purpose of the thing that I wrote, which I don't know if it was technically called a declaration or whatever it was, it was to write down my account of events as fresh in my memory as possible. And Ms. Hurd asked you to, to write down your witness account, is that correct? I, I do not remember actually, I think. Did I don't know. Did Mr. Depp ask you to write down anything in support of any legal filings? I, I, I don't remember. So it's your testimony sitting here today that you don't remember one way or another, whether it was Mr. Depp or Ms. Ms. Hurd that asked you to write down your witness account during their divorce. Is that correct? Um, I wrote down my account. That is the memory that I have. I wrote down everything as clearly as I could remember it as soon as I could. You provided a witness statement in the UK proceedings. Is that correct? I believe so. Do you recall how many witness statements you provided? Just one. And you provided this witness statement to the son's attorneys? I don't know who it got provided to. Did you testify in the UK trial? Um, yes. And for which party did you testify for the UK trial? I believe it was the, um, publication. And by the publication, you mean the sun? Yes. When was the last time you spoke to Ms. Hurd? Perhaps six months ago, maybe more. What did you and Ms. Hurd speak about? Probably, um, it was before her baby was born. So we were mostly speaking about her baby at that point. Did you speak to, when was the last time you spoke to Ms. Whitney Heard? Um, around uh, November, October, November of last year. When you 
say last year, you mean 2021? Yes. <clears throat> when did you first meet Ms. Amber Heard? Um, I believe it was 2003. When you met Ms. Heard in 2003, you developed a friendship. Is that right? Yes. Would you say you were best friends? Um, we became very close friends. Your friendship with Ms. Heard it persisted through her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. And you were friends with Ms. Heard through her divorce from Mr. Depp as well. Is that correct? Yes. Other than when you lived at the Eastern Columbia building, which we'll get to, did you ever live with Ms. Heard? Yes. When was this? Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen to twenty eighteen. Yeah. Where did you both live? We lived on Holly Drive. Was that a home? Yes. And did you pay rent? Um, no. Did Ms. Heard? Yes. Sitting here today, do you still consider Ms. Heard a friend? Um, I wouldn't consider her not a friend. What does that mean? We don't speak. We are not enemies. Why don't you speak? Um, we grew apart. Shalanda, can I put my question read back? Yes. Sitting here today, you can't give me one reason why you grew apart from Ms. Heard. I wanted to spend more time with other people in my life and prioritize other relationships and other, yeah, other relationships. Over the course of your friendship with Amber Heard, did you ever see her using illicit drugs? Can you define illicit drugs? Not prescribed. Um, yes. Did you ever see her use cocaine? Mm. Yes. How many times? I don't know. Countless? No. Less than 10? Yes. Less than five? Yes. If you remember, when was the first time you ever saw Amber Heard use cocaine? I, I don't remember. Did you ever do cocaine with Ms. Heard, Amber Heard? Um, yes. How often? Mm. Uh, not often. Was there a point in your relationship with Ms. Amber using more cocaine? Uh, no. Did you ever see Ms. Amber Heard use cocaine while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? I don't 
don't think so, no. You know what provisional is? Yes. Are you aware that Ms. Amber Heard has taken a drug called provisional? Yes. Do you know when she started taking it? Uh, no. Do you know whether Amber Heard continued to take provisional during her relationship with Mr. Depp? Mm, no. Did she ever tell you that she had stopped taking provisional? She never told me that. Are you familiar with any of the side effects of provisional? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects as a result of provisional? She never said anything about that. You testified you saw Ms. Hurd use mushrooms less than five times, yes? Yes. Each of those five times, or less than, was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Did you say each of the five times? Right. Not each of the five times. How many times that you observed Amber Heard use mushrooms was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Maybe three. You recall the specific occasions when you saw Amber Heard use mushrooms while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Um, the first Coachella that we went to, the second Coachella that we went to, and Maybe at Hicksville. But was I can't Mr. be Was Mr. Duff at Hicksville? Yes. Around June of 2014, you moved into one of the penthouses in the Eastern Columbia building. Is that correct? I don't remember which month, but I did move into the penthouses. Approximately in 2014? Um, uh, approximately. And Ms. Heard at the time was in a relationship with Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And it was Mr. Depp who invited you to live in one of the penthouses, right? Uh, they both did. When you say they both did, they both sit you down and invite you to live in the penthouses? I don't remember how the invitation happened, but it came from both of them. This was a penthouse Mr. Depp owned, right? Correct. And specifically, the one you lived in, it was referred to as penthouse one, right? Correct. And when you moved in, Mr. Depp gave you a master key to all the penthouses he owned, right? It could have been um, one of his assistants. When you say one of his assistants, you mean Mr. D one of Mr. Depp's assistants? Correct. So one, either Mr. Depp or one of his assistants gave you a master key to all the penthouses that he owned, correct? Mm, yes. Mr. Depp never charged Mr. Drew for rent while he lived at Penthouse One, did he? He did not charge uh, him any rent, no. Did either of you get physical? No. And how was this argument resolved? We talked it out. You recalled another argument with Ms. Heard at Holly House, is that correct? Mm-hmm. What was this argument about? Mm 
I think that we were setting up for Thanksgiving and um, we were looking for uh, maybe some glasses or some <coughs> dishware. We had just moved in and we couldn't find them anywhere. And then um, she finally found them in a place that I thought I had looked and uh, we started arguing about that. She thought that I wasn't uh, looking hard enough, I think, and I told her that I thought that I looked there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what their argument was about. Um, was this just a verbal altercation or did you get physical with each other? Um, yeah, I believe that we, I believe that I pushed her. How did Ms. Amber Heard react to that? She, she either pushed or hit me back. Yeah. You know where she, where she hit you? I think it was on my cheek. Do you recall any other physical altercations that you've had with Miss Amber Heard? Uh, no. Do you recall any specific instances when you saw Amber Heard get into a fight with someone else? Uh, no. In the time you've known Amber Heard, have you ever seen her wear hair extensions? Uh, yeah, yes. Did she have hair extensions in while she was in a relationship with Mr. Death? I, I, I don't know when exactly she had them throughout the time of knowing her. I'm going to mark as Pennington Exhibit 1, Ms. Pennington's witness statement in the UK proceeding, which is dated June 16th, 2020. Ms. Pennington, first and foremost, do you recognize this document? Yes. Ms. Pennington, this is a sworn witness statement that you, you provided well, I, in the UK, right? I understand. I wanted to get to the bottom and make sure that this was the one that I signed and saw the date, and that was the document. I just finished it. Yes, this is the document. Did you write this witness statement yourself? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yes. Thank you. Did anyone help you write this? Um, no. Did Amber Heard help you write this? No. Did Amber Heard's counsel help you write this? No. Other than your attorney, did you speak with anyone about the preparation of this witness statement? No. Could please turn to the 10th page of the document where your signature is or a signature is? Is that your signature on the 10th page of this document, Ms. Pennington? That is my e-signature, yes. Are all the statements in this document true to the best of your knowledge and recollection? Yes. You previously testified that you went on a trip to Hicksville with uh, Ms. Hurd, Mr. Depp, and some other friends. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall when this trip occurred? not off the top of my head. Do you recall who else went on that trip? Yes. Who else was on that trip? Um, Whitney Heard. Nathan, 
who was um, one of Johnny's assistants. Um, Brittany Eustis. Kelly Milano. Anyone else that you can recall? Trying to remember. No, I, I don't remember anybody else. Where were you all staying? At Hicksville Trailer Park. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp become, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote, toward a friend of yours? <coughs> yes. Relative to where Mr. Depp was, where were you when this occurred? Um, we were around a campfire. My question is a bit more specific. Relative to where Mr. Depp was when this occurred, where were you sitting or standing? I was at the same campfire. How close were you to Mr. Depp? Uh, I don't Six to 10 feet. What time of day did this occur? evening. Have you consumed any drugs or alcohol at this time? I think so. What do you recall consuming at that time? Um, I don't remember likely wine. I don't remember specifically. Do you smoke any weed? No. Did you consume any cocaine? No. Had you consumed any mushrooms? Uh, I believe so. Had you consumed any MDMA? No. Who was a friend that you referenced Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive towards? Um, Kelly, Kelly Sue. How did you know her? She was um, married to a work friend of mine. Do you have any independent recollection of how long you had known Kelly Sue Milano by the time Hicksville occurred more than one year less than two what did you witness kelly sue milano doing that evening before mr depp became quote angry and aggressive i witnessed her hang out with the rest of the group. Did you see her consume any alcohol? Um, not that I remember. Did you see her smoke any weed? No. Consume cocaine? No. Did you see her consume any mushrooms? Um, Maybe one. So or I'm 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 genuinely trying to remember. I saw I saw her eat some amount. I don't know how much. Did you see her consume any MDMA? No. You testified that Mr. Depp said words to the effect of quote, get off my woman, end quote your friend. Is that right? I testified that. Did you personally hear Mr. Depp say that? Yes. 
Is this the, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote, conduct by Mr. Depp that you testified to? Yes. Other than telling Kelly Sue Milano to, quote, get off his woman, end quote, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote? That was, that was what happened. Then I think Amber, I think they were, Kelly and Amber were hugging on a chair out by the fire. He came out of nowhere, said that. And then I think that Amber and Johnny went back to the, um, to their trailer. Other than hearing Mr. Depp say something to the effect of get off my woman, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive? That's it. Did you hear Amber say anything to Mr. Depp? I don't remember her saying anything. Did you hear Amber Heard raise her voice when speaking to Mr. Depp? No. What, if anything, do you remember about Amber's reaction to Mr. Depp's behavior? She was trying to comfort him. This evening, Hicksville, did you ever see Amber Heard consume any drugs or alcohol? Mm. I didn't see it. You didn't see Ms. Heard drink any wine? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember a specific time watching her take a sip of a drink. Was she holding a drink? I don't remember. And this evening in Hicksville, did you see Mr. Dobbs consume any drugs or alcohol? I, I didn't see any specific image in my mind of him consume. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp quote, in a rage, end quote, that Ms. Heard described? Did I personally witness the rage in the trailer? Yeah. No. Did you hear Mr. Depp yelling in the trailer? No. Did you hear Ms. Heard yelling in the trailer? No. Did you personally see that the trailer was, quote, trashed, as Ms. Heard described? The next morning? Yes. Yes. What specifically did you see in the trailer? Mm. The thing I remember specifically was the light fixtures had been knocked off. But you didn't see Mr. Depp knock off the light fixtures in the trailer, is that correct? I did not see it. So the only thing you know about what happened in that trailer is what Ms. Heard told you and your observations of the light fixtures being knocked off. Is that correct? The only thing I know about what happened in the trailer is what she told me and what I saw the next morning. And the only thing you saw the next morning was that the light fixtures had been knocked off. Is that correct? That was not the only thing I saw. It is the specific thing I saw. What else do you recall about the trailer? It was in a general disarray. What does that mean? It was trash. It was torn apart. What besides the light fixtures were thrown apart? I've already told you specifically, I remember the light fixtures. The rest is a general disarray. What is a general disarray to you, Ms. Pennington? Stuff off the counters, uh, cushions thrown around, things strewn about on the floor. Did you see Ms. Heard shortly after she returned from Australia? All right, why don't we just yes. stop right there? So that'd be a good breaking point, I think. Okay. okay.
Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and break for the evening. Again, do not discuss uh, uh, this case with anybody and don't do any outside research. And we'll see you in the morning at 9 o'clock, all right? Get some sleep, okay? Thank you. Just have a few items. I just, just for the record, I want to make sure exhibit uh, plaintiff one two four eight from yesterday actually should be corrected in the record to plaintiff's one two four eight a. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Thank oh, you. Okay, good. All right. And so the witnesses tomorrow are they live, remote, or do we need a? Rem we have web one link? one live witness tomorrow. The rest are all video depositions. So they're all depositions. So we don't need a WebEx link. No. Okay. No. All right. Other than that, jury instructions and verdict forms. Uh, I have received jury instructions from both parties. Thank you for that. However, I have not received agreed upon jury instructions as requested. Um, so I'm not sure if that has happened or not happened as far as getting an agreed. Your Honor, we have been trying to meet and confer with them for a week. Well, you know, I, that... Your Honor, they're identified and emailed to Sammy. Okay. So the ones that you agreed upon? Yes. Okay. That's fine. So. If you could do the same and just give me the, which ones you sure. agree upon, sure. I'd appreciate that. Um, if we can get uh, also by Thursday your objections to the ones that you don't agree upon in writing to me by Thursday morning, okay? Yes, can we Can we get that just so I know what you're objecting to? Because I only have two hours on Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. To, to, to deal with this issue. So I want to make sure we're all prepared to get that done at that time frame, okay? Understood, Your Honor. All right, yes. great. Anything? Your Honor, I, I just want to make clear. We, we haven't seen what they sent until they sent today. So okay, that, that's fine. We've been trying to confer about this for a week and have I don't, I'm not interested no in anybody's in finger pointing, but I understand, but we'll just go forward from here, and if I can get them Thursday morning, that would be fantastic, okay? Understood. All right, Thank great. You, All right, have a good evening, and we'll Thank see you in the morning, you. okay?